How's everyone today? It's been a bit... It was a bit nicer earlier on. It was nicer earlier on, but it's been a bit cloudy now. But we are getting on to the evening time here in the UK, so it's to be expected. Oh, God. Anyway, I hope you've all had a nice day. Hope you've all been busy. And guess what? It's Friday. So, you've all got the weekend off now. You can all have a lying tomorrow morning. If you haven't got children, that like get you up at like the crack of dawn and things like that. But yes, you can have a lying tomorrow morning. Anyway, as my as my um, picture said, my my opening picture for my YouTube, my profile pic for the YouTube tonight, it says, "Don't who don't forget who we are here for." Something like that. Why isn't it showing? Come on. Right. And this is the lad we are here for. Don't even know why that Madeline Soto come up to her. But this is the lad we're here for. Right. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. 15 year old autistic lad for for some reason, got up during between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. and walked out of the house. Right, now, that's all the information we've got. The only information we've got is, like, we got up Sunday morning, his mum cooked breakfast, fun fact. Apparently, I don't think she cooked much. He's on the phone talking to family or whatever. Uh, they go out and they go and pick the niece up. Then they meet two, two of his aunts. They go do a bit of grocery shopping and then they go to BJ's. Where, don't forget, he got a colossal popcorn. Colossal. Right. He then went from there to bowling. Then, after being in the grocery's home, they went out for dinner, him and his mum, to the Texas Roadhouse. They were seen leaving the Texas Roadhouse about 6.30ish, so they got home about 6.39pm. Then, between that time of, between him coming home and 9pm, he took the rubbish the rubbish, the trash out, bins out, to the curb. At 9pm, he went to bed, no problems, good night, I love you mum, all this lot. She was talking on the phone to Chris from about 9.30, 9, 9.30 till about 12, 12, 12, where she then, oh and don't forget she's also reading a book on for this course she's taking at school. She's doing a, I don't know, I can't remember what course she's doing now. But she's, she's back at school and she's doing a course in something. So she's reading this book up on that. Now, I know they say us women, we can multitask, and we can, and we do. But, come on, you're trying to read Something that you need to know for your coursework, for your schooling, right? So you need to concentrate so you can, so it sticks up there in the head. Me, I find if I'm able to remember something, I write it down, like certain key parts of it. Not the whole lot, just certain parts of it, I'll write it down so it stays there. Some people don't need to do that, I do, I have to write it down. So then, by writing it down, I remember it. Right, so she's reading this book, or whatever, and she's talked to Chris on the phone till 12. She then gets up, 
puts the puppies in the cage, the kennel, whatever, goes to bed. So that was about 12-ish. She then gets up at 6am to get every, uh, Sebastian ready for school and her for work, I suppose. And when she goes in his bedroom, he's gone. He's gone. Don't know why he walked out that door. Right? That's all she kept saying. Yeah. For a lad to leave who's autistic, they know they, they have their safe areas. Right? And for Sebastian, that would have been his home where he lived. That would have been his safe zone. Right? So we thought. So we thought. So why would an autistic lad get up during the night and walk out the house with no shoes on, no coat on, no phone, no money, nothing? Why? Well, I was thinking about this the other night because I haven't done anything on Sebastian for a while, for since Monday. Right? And... I thought, I remember this woman saying in a comment, someone asked her, she, she's got an autistic child, and I, they said to her, what would get your child to leave the house in the middle of the night with no shoes on, and no coat, and no money, nothing? And her answer was, her mum, his mum, or his dad. So say his mum and dad were outside saying, Oh, go, come out, come on, come on, come out here, come out, come out, come outside now. That child is going to go out to his mum and dad. So, what made this 15-year-old get up and leave the house? There's several possibilities. We all, as I said, most autistic children class their home as a, a safe place. A safe zone. They're a happy place. They know they're safe there, they're happy there. Right? But obviously, we've since heard he's not being that, that happy there. He told his dad he didn't want to go back home one, one weekend. His dad said, why don't you want to go back home? Right? And he did say something like, well, I keep picking on me that you know what I mean? And his dad said, don't worry, it's not much longer and you'll be here. Right? You haven't got a, you've only got a few more, a couple of more months and then, then you'll be here. Right? Because I can see where the dad was coming from. Because if a child goes, I don't want to go home because they're picking on me. Well, it could be the mother's asking him to, I don't know, Pick his school bag up constantly when he comes in from school and he just drops it on the floor. Told you, pick your school bag up. Pick your coat up. Put your shoes away. Do this. Do And some children can look on that as being picking on. Right? And they're not. Right? And so he can't really say, okay, I'll keep you here. You won't have to go back then. You can stay here. But then Kate is going to have him up in court and say, he didn't bring the son, my son home. He's supposed to bring him home on a Sunday. He didn't bring him home. All because my son said we was picking on him. And as I said, the mother could turn around and say, all, we, all I ever said to my son was, put your bag away. Put your shoes away. Put your coat away. You know what I mean? Things like that. And as Seth knows, we also found out in that interview, Seth knows he can he can lie. Sebastian can not lie, but exaggerate, I would say. But his exaggerations of something that happens or something that is said can get people into trouble. 
And that's what happened with Seth. He said he's going to whoop his backside. How many times have you said to each other, I'm going to whoop your backside? You go pack that in, I'm going to whoop your backside. I've said it many times to my kids when they little pack it in. About... This hand is coming very close to your backside. You know what I mean? But you never do. It's just a warning. You never do it. And that was Seth. But he went to school and said to his school teachers that his dad was going to do a, a throw down on him or something like that. So he's had CP, uh, Child Protective Services Act, right? And when the dad told him, told him what had happened, what he'd actually said, they went, oh, well, he said this. He said, no. So he knows his son can exaggerate, but his words that he uses can get people into trouble. So he's got to be careful when Sebastian says anything to him. Right? Is he exaggerating? Is he just making more of this than what he actually is? Right? I know they say you should believe a child when a child says this and a child says that. You should. But as parents, you've got to stop and think, I can't, I cannot not take him back home just because he says he's being bullied. They're picking on me. Right? That's not a good enough reason. Perhaps if he said they are, they use the belt on me. They do this, Dad, they do that. They make me wear pull-ups at home. They make me, you know what I mean? Then his dad would have a stronger argument to keep him at his and not take him home. But when Sebastian isn't telling him none of this, he's got no argument to fight in court. So when I hear people say, oh, Seth, shouldn't have, Seth knew what was going on in that household, he didn't. He didn't know. Right? Because Sebastian wasn't telling him Truly, what was happening? Now, some people are losing faith in this case. They're losing faith because of the BS, the circus, the, all the distractions out there. Look, please, don't lose faith in this case. This is about the 15-year-old autistic lad who needs to be found one way or the other. Um, ignore what you hear on channels, on YouTube channels. A lot of these channels are stu saying what they say to get the viewers in because there's a lot of people who like the drama, believe it or not. They like drama. You know what I mean? I'm not one of them. I don't... What have I watched today on YouTube? I've watched a lot of um, these tiny home programs where they're, they're living tiny homes. And these camping YouTube channels and all this lot. I've been watching them today because it's every channel on YouTube is all the circus. It's all the BS. It's a crazy train. It's you name it. It's like that somewhere between Chris, Katie, and Seth, Sebastian has gone, been pushed out. And we can't have that happen. We need to focus again on this lag. Forget about Seth. I don't care about Seth. Right? I think he needs to get some help. Proper help, not from Tony, right? Because I remember when Tony first come on this, into this, uh, there was a YouTuber, I'm not going to say the name. He said, you watch, now that this Tony's come on it, this will go haywire. This case will go up in the air, it'll be total mess. And he's right. Since Tony stepped in, it's been a total 
mess up. Right? <laughs> really has. Tony said to Seth, Stop up, stay off YouTube. So Seth was. So we wasn't getting these really, really nice interviews from Seth when he spoke about Sebastian. And I used to love hearing Seth talk about Sebastian. I really did. But then, Tony goes on TikTok. And he spreads... Um... Untruths. He's not, he's not checking the facts before he talks. Right? Which is making Seth look bad. So everyone... But as I said, I don't care about Seth. I don't care about Tony. I don't care about Chris. And I don't care about Katie. I care about... Hello, Victoria. I care about Sebastian. The 15-year-old, this lad here on the screen, no one else. And if you want to watch a channel where there's no, no drama, no circus, no crazy train, no BS, then this is the channel. This is the channel. Right? Because there's still people. I noticed today, I, I, I was going to say something. And I thought, nope, nope, keep your hand off the keyboard. Keep your hand off the flipping keyboard. It's so hard. I had to sit on my hands today. I've had to sit on my hands so I couldn't type anything. Because there's still people coming through about that video with the lights and the ruckus. I'm going, ooh. There is no ruckus. The lights came from the same... That ruckus came from the same video with those two little spotty lights. Yep. And all I've done is they've zoomed in on that house, that house on the corner, their neighbour's house, with the spotlights, the garage lights, and the, with the trees. It makes it look like there's some ruckus going on. Right? Because there's like four or five trees in front of that house. And yet they're still saying it came from their garages. I'm going, no, it didn't come from their garages. Until RTB or law enforcement tell me that the video with the lights came from house 1016, Stafford Court. Then it didn't come from... It isn't outside their garages, right? It, it came from 1001 Stafford Court, the corner house on the bottom of the road. You cannot see their garages from that house. You can't. So... There's me sitting today on my laptop reading some of these comments and I'm having to sit on my hands so that I wouldn't type because they're getting me so annoyed that they're still coming back to these flipping lights. We don't know what those lights were. We don't know if it was a trash, uh, a garbage truck. Right? We don't know if that one light, number two light, was someone, could have been someone walking their dog. Could have been someone walking their dog at three, four in the morning. Your dog's got to pee. Your dog's got to pee. So you've got to get up and take that dog out. Right? So you don't know. It could have been someone from that... Other house on the corner uh, with the spotlight where the pirate ruckus was happening. It could, have, it could have been someone from that house coming out with their dog, if they have a dog. You know what I mean? It could have been anything. But there was no ruckus going on because that house was... They leave that one 
108 and I think that would have been 107. Well, I'd have to Google check it, go on the Google Maps and have a look. But, and then, so we don't even know, right? What I don't understand is if that cam camera caught the garbage truck or whatever it was going past at three in the morning, would it not have picked up Sebastian walking by with his little torch? Would it not have picked up that? You know, I'm thinking that could have possibly been Sebastian because the one light is the house on the very corner, which is a like a security light, and the other two lights where the house on on the bend, they're security lights. And then you've got this one light that's moving, and it's only a very, very small light. That could have been Sebastian walking along. But we don't know where it goes from there. Right? The dogs picked up on a scent. That took them that route, down past the neighbor's house, round the back of the neighbor's house, down to the corner of the road, and all the way up Kelling Road, up to the construction site there. But as I said, that scent could have come from the Saturday, the Friday, any time. It could have come from any time. Because we know Sebastian used to go over into that new uh, build that new area where they're building the houses because residents over there said they used to see him over there. They've seen him in the area. So we know he used to go over there. So that scent could have come from any day he was out, while he's out and about. And like, like I said, while he's out and about, he always only ever, ever wanted a friend, kicking on. Perhaps he could have met someone while walking along the road one day. Yeah. And this person being really nice to him. He's vulnerable. All he wanted was a friend. So someone being nice to him, he's going to be, oh, he's my friend. You know what I mean? And I probably got talking and he's talking about his Minecraft game and things like that. And this guy's going, all this other person goes, Oh, I know that game. I play that game a lot. You need to come to mine one day and we can sit and play this game together. Hmm. So he could have made friends that way without telling his mum. Because we all know she didn't do play dates with him. Right? He didn't go to play dates. He didn't go to parties. He didn't go to any groups, after school groups, after school clubs, nothing. He didn't do nothing like that. He'd go to school, come home from school. His mum would still be at her work. So he'd be at home on his own for a few hours. He'd have to do certain chores when he got home from school and get his homework done. Right? So, he wasn't out much. So, he must have known, he must have known the code to the door to get in. And there's me just thinking he didn't know the code to the door. He must have known the code to that front door. If he was coming home from school and she was still at work, he must have been able to get in somehow, so he had to know the code to that front door. So I'm drinking some juice, and it's called Rubicon. And it's Rubicon Spring Orange and Mango. Orange Mango, I should say, not Orange and Mango, Orange Mango. Really nice. So he did have to go to the door because how would he get in from school when his mum was at work? But 
from what we've learned, from what we've heard, that house was not a safe place for him. Right? Did you what? She found something in the in the water on Google Earth, and she called CP. No, I have not watched that yet. I did see something come up on my TV, but as I said, I haven't watched a lot, anything like this on YouTube all day. I really haven't, because of the circus that's going on. So I might try and I'll watch that after when I finish tonight, before I go to bed. She found something in the water on Google Earth and she called CP. CP told her to delete it and not send it to Seth. Are you kidding me, Robin? Why would you tell her to delete it? Oh my God, I'm all... You know what, I'm going to have to watch that now, definitely. I hope she did send it to Seth. I'm mad. I hope to God she sent it to Seth. If not, when I watch it, I'll watch it on here. And I'll email, I'll email it in. I'll put it on that Sebastian Rob, Rogers group. Uh, yeah, I'll put it on that Sebastian Rogers Facebook group. Oh my God. You know what, if, so, if I was her, if, I did, if that had been me, and CP said, delete it and not send it to Seth, I'd have gone, red flag, red flag there. So, we can watch it here if you want. I can watch it, put it on here. But, I want to focus on Sebastian. I don't want to get into that circus, I really don't. And because a lot of people are, are not watching anything to do with Sebastian because of the circus acts going on. I'll go, I'll go on YouTube and see if I can pull it up. Right, because I have not watched it. As I said, I, I did see it come up on my screen, my TV. And, um, oh, what am I doing? Yeah, go on now. Oh, and I did see it come up on my screen. So what was it now? Crime scenes of sex, isn't it? Don't tell Seth. How long is it? Oh, it's only six minutes. Okay. Hold on. Pause it. It's only six minutes, so I'll play it on here. She won't show the pics. Come on, she's got to. Unless she's, has she sent it to the TBI? I hope she sent it to the TBI. Go to the go back. Go back. Oh. Right. Let's just share this. I've got to take this off. Oh, I hope she's took uh, she sent it to the TBI or law enforcement. Right. This is the one. Right. And we're going to watch it now. As I said, the thing about her is her videos aren't that long. A lot of hers. I've only known her do like an hour or so long videos before. But most of them are very short, which I like. Okay. I'm going to do this, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's Emma. You're at Crime Stories Obsessed. And I've been holding on to something for the last few weeks. And I'm going to tell you about it. Yes, it's from So, the as some of you may know, I like to look at Google Earth. Yeah. I cannot search for Sebastian. I'm in the UK. 
And so the only method I have is looking at Google Earth. Now, some of you say, yes, some of the images are not new. Some of the images are old, um, but they do update them quite frequently. And satellite images, rather than street view, satellite images are pretty recent. So I decided, given the fact that he's been gone for a good few months now, well, for most of this year, I decided that I was going to have a little look. And as I was searching, I found something that just made me stop in my tracks. And as you know, I've found a lot of things, but I've never really sent them to anyone. I found something as I was looking and it really caught my eye. Now, this wasn't in Hendersonville. This was in North Carolina. And oh. I don't know what made me look in North Carolina, but I found something. I have passed it on to a couple of people, including Terry Lynn. But let's get to the start at the beginning. So I found this image of what looks like somebody in the water. And I did send it to Ellie, but oh. I don't know what Ellie do, whether they actually pick up on any of these messages and tips, how often that. they look at them. And I sent it to Chris Proudfoot. Yep, many of you are going to say, and everybody has their own opinions because everybody thinks somebody is responsible for this and who it could be. So I sent it to Chris. And the only reason why I did is because he's the only number I really have. Um, and I sent it to him. And I sent it for two reasons. One, because I wanted him to go and have a look or to send somebody to have a look or maybe to get LA to get off their asses and maybe look a little bit quicker yeah right. secondly I did it because I wanted to know what kind of reaction I would get when I did send it to uh, him so they looked at it and I was told first of all I was asked have you posted this anywhere I said um before I could finish um, he said, can you take it down anywhere you've posted it? So I was like, right, okay, yep. So I took this image down and I came back to him and I said, right, okay, I've taken it down. And he said, who's seen it? And I said, um, well, I don't think anybody really. So he said, right. He said, please don't send it to Seth. Yes. Sends it please to don't send yeah. it to anybody that is involved with Seth or knows Seth. Oh my so God. I said, okay. And he was quite adamant not to send this information to Seth. And I sat here and I literally got quite upset about this because there were a lot of things going on in my mind. First of all, I had to tell myself off for sending it to him. Yep. In case he is involved. And at the time I sent it to him, I didn't think he was involved. Mm. Because you go back and forth, don't you? We may not, I do. Um, so I, I told myself off, so I don't need any of you to tell me off for that. Um, I'm quite capable of uh, telling myself off for that. Smack your hand. And that. then I sat there and thought, why would he not want people to see this image? Why would he not want Seth to see this image? And why would he not want anyone involved with Seth to see this image? And it really, it really got to me. And it's been playing on my mind for weeks and weeks. And yes, Ellie knows about this. It's been playing on my mind for weeks and weeks. And no, I'm not going to put the image out on here. But I'm going to tell you that the response I got was, not quite what I expected. And I don't understand why if Seth, uh, forget you, forget you, just forget for a minute who you think is responsible and who you don't think is responsible. Why would the stepfather of a missing boy not want the father who is out there searching, forget the arguments between the two of them, forget the going back and forth between the two of them. If the dad is out there, searching why would he not want the dad to either see or hear about this tip and that's really got to me and it's played on my mind and i've toyed with it and i've spoken to my friend evil exists for weeks about it and she knows all about it and we just both think it's just 
a little bit odd and i'd like to know what you think of this and why you think he told me not to send it to seth why he would not want the man who is currently out there searching with search groups not to have any information not to have the tips not to send them to seth what do you make of this guys i've been toying with this for weeks as to even put this out there i'm not going to put the image out there just yet but i want to know what you think about this please let me know in the comment section take care and i'll be back with you again soon bye guys Besides me watching it live tonight. That is interesting. Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know what to say. Emma. I think her name's Emma. But. I hope she told him. Oh, well, I sent it to law enforcement. I hope she did. Uh, well, I have sent it to law enforcement. Oh. I'd have liked to have heard what he just said then. If she said to him, well, I have sent it to, I've actually sent it to law enforcement. You know what I mean? It's important. Well, hold on. Hold on, SG. Hi, SG. It's important thing. The important thing is to find Sebastian. So it's only important to get law enforcement, to get law enforcement. I don't want to use this lady or CP. No. This lady, she does a lot of good work. She does <laughs> smell. <laughs> but we don't know what she found, whether it was in a water or whether it was on land. We don't know. But why would CP tell her, to, if she's posted it anywhere to take it down, why? And do not tell Seth or anyone associated with him, why? Why? That's a big why. Hmm. I wonder if she will release the footage like in another video sometime. I know why she hasn't released it because she, it could be evidence and she has sent it to law enforcement so it could be evidence so she don't want it put out there. Book to tell CP of all people. You know what I mean? Come on, man. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I want to smack my head off the table here, but I can't. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not going to beat her up because <laughs> she's UK like us. She's the UK like me. Emma is great, she is. She is. Yeah. But if you don't give a damn, if CP don't give a damn, why would you tell her not to show Seth? Why, if he doesn't give a damn, why would he, CP, tell her not to show Seth or anyone associated with Seth? Right? Hmm. Oh. Oh, God. I'm going to have to start going on. I go on Google Maps. I don't go on Google Earth, but I'll have to start. I have been on Google Earth. Hi, Keen. What's happening? Show who what. Right. Crime stories obsessed. She goes, because she's from the UK like me, she goes on Google Earth a lot. Right. And she did come across some herself once before, and she told Ryan Fine's truth. And it was summer for um, Summer Moon Utah Wells. And so she told, gave him the coordinates and everything. And he did go out there with a friend, with a colleague, and they checked it out. And it was just a, a log. 
but from the distance, when you're looking from above on Google Earth, it looked like a body. Like you could make out some sort of arms and legs. So that's what she did. She sent it to him. And she said she did call law enforcement. She did send it to law enforcement. So I'm glad she done that. But anyway, she's on Google Earth and she's come she found something in North Carolina. She don't know why she was looking in that area. She just was. And she come across something. Right? So she sent it to people. Of all people, she sent it to. She sent it to CP. Allegedly, Seth acts creator for Pew Pew. Maybe CP was about Seth coming up after CP and Cape. <laughs> Yes, I heard that. I've seen the live when that YouTuber said that as well. I was, I saw the live. Anyway, so she sent this image to CP. And the answer she got back wasn't anything she expected. He told her, he said, have you posted it anywhere? If so, take it down. And then he said, do not tell Seth or anyone associated with him. Meaning, don't show this to Seth or anyone associated to him. So, what? Oh, my God. My ears are itching and everything. When my ears itch, that's a bad thing. My ears are itching. Ooh. When my ears itch, at the back of my ears, Means I'm getting up. Oh God! Why would you say that if it wasn't something of importance? Oh my God! I wish I could get that information, that fi that footage off her. She wouldn't send it to me if I asked her. She wouldn't, even though I am from the UK. I have no idea if that is true, but I'm suggesting it's it is or isn't true. No, I was on the live. Well, I wasn't on the live, but I was watching the live. Now, this YouTuber is a young... He's in his 30s, right? And he's had a bit of a rough life. And he's straightened his life out. And he's doing good on his channel. He really is. And he does phonings. He'll start off talking about something, then he'll go on to the phoning. And he has his members on um, subscribers phoning and anyway it's talk someone said something to him and he said right he said I've got to get this off my chest because this is weighing heavy on me now. It's been on my chest for a while and it's weighing heavy on me. So he told us told everyone on his life that before he moved to Tennessee a few weeks, a week or so, or whatever, before he moved to Tennessee, Seth had asked him for a pew pew to buy a pew pew, and then he give him the money. That f and then for him to bring it down to Tennessee when he moved, and he would give him the money back. Well, this YouTuber didn't. Thank God. CP is controlling him. I only want to be the smart guy in the room. And overthink himself. He, yeah, we know that. We've heard him say that many times to other YouTubers. Well, if you want information, come to me. I've got the whole... I'm, I I get informed about everything. I went on a drive round with the law enforcement the first day. Seth didn't. Right. It's okay, SG. We'll get, we'll let you off this time. <laughs> anyway, oh god! If only, uh, if, uh, if God, my ears are eating really bad now. Ooh. Um, if I thought she would send me that information, I'd email her, but she wouldn't. She won't send it me. 
She don't know me like, you know what I mean, other YouTubers. But she does do some good work. But like I said, she is only... I hear that rattling sound. Clink, 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 clink. Boom. Coming very soon, CP. Someone is going to go down for this. Whether it's CP, Katie, Seth, which I doubt. Even though he's doing some, saying some crazy stuff lately, he wasn't involved. He was not involved. Right. So he will not be going to prison unless they're having full of gun thing, the pew pew. But it's his word against the YouTubers, or the YouTubers' word against his. You know what I mean? And. So, I can't see that going anywhere. Right, now, I was sitting watching that interview last night with Seth and Tony. But I had to go to bed because it's like 3 a.m. when I went to bed. I thought, I've got to get some sleep. This is not, not soon enough. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something now. I, was watch, I watch a lot of these... FBI true crime, right? Where they talk about cr crimes that have happened and they've been the FBI have dealt with. And they've said in them it takes it can take it took them a few months to get the information they needed, but they got it in the end. So it can take a while for law enforcement and TBI to get the information they need and to get it all put together. Because at the moment, it's all circumstantial. They've got no hard... They haven't got the smoking pew, pew You know what I mean? They haven't got that. And they need that. They need the smoking pew, pew. I keep... Seth stated in an interview last night in the CP's report, Sebastian only felt comfortable at his dad's house. He probably did. You know what I mean? Because... His dad would let him go online. And I think that was probably one of the problems at home with his mum and his stepdad. I think he wanted to go online. And his mum was saying, no, you're not allowed online. You know that. Oh, well, I do at my dad's... You know what I mean? And you know how kids can play each other off, the parents off, yeah? My kids will come to me and they go, dad said we can do go here. Or we can do this. I say it. And I'll stand there and go, did they? And then I'll go, I'll go out the room and I'll go back. I'll go to my husband. Did you say they could go to this? Or did you say they could do this? No. So I'll go back in the house. So I've just spoke to your dad. And you could see their faces would drop. Because they know they've been caught out. So kids do play the parents off. So I think he's probably playing his mum and dad off. And... Like, well, I get to play the internet at my at dad's. Why can't I here? You know what I mean? I've got friends online, but and things like that. So they isolated him so bad because, as I said, he didn't have after school clubs. He didn't go to any play uh, play groups, um, play visits where he'd go and mingle with other children like himself with autism, he didn't do anything like that, the only place he would go would be the park, and that would be with his dad, I doubt his mum would take him to the park. Seth also stated law enforcement said there was no sign of Sebastian leaving the house. Right, so if law enforcement said that, and we all know there was no sign, we know that anyway, so that wasn't a big secret. Why have they not just, they're working on the case. You know they said the first day they classed him as a runaway. The second day he was missing, they put him down as missing. That's when it went to an Amber Alert. Then on the Wednesday they did a whole 180. 
not a 360, a 180. Right? So there's no sign of him leaving the house. The law enforcement know that. In my opinion, he didn't come home from the restaurant. Now, you know what? I'm stuck. That's another thing. I, I am just stuck on that. Robin, I wish he had as well. But he had no solid ground to fight. You know what I mean? Because like Seth said, he got him. He had CPS at his house once because of what Sebastian said at school. So Seth knows he can, like you could say, if you don't pack that in, you're going to get a smack backside. I'm going to tan your backside. Child can go to school and say, my mum told me she's going to beat my backside. You know what I mean? They can exaggerate it and they don't understand that words hurt and can get people into trouble. They don't understand that. Sebastian was in a tough position, so much confusion. The rules in the house was extremely different. Diapers in one house, not live. Yes, very confusing. But I also understand when Seth was said, like, because the mum said he's on punishment, right? Because he's on a punishment at home. He's not going to punish him at his house. Right? It didn't happen at his house, so why should he punish his son for something that he didn't, he wasn't there for? Right? Plus, he only has him the Friday night, Saturday all day, and Sunday morning. He's back at his mum's Sunday afternoon. So he only has him for a day and a half. He's not going to put him on punishment for that short time he has him once a fortnight. And I can see the point there. It's like if my my son daughter was here Sunday, a son daughter and I was here Sunday, and um, some of the set I can't even remember what it was now, and the kids wanted something, and I said, "Yeah, you can go and get." It. But they haven't had their. I said, "Excuse me, while at the grand's house, they can have and do whatever they want. My house, my rules." And my son turned around and said, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. I don't know about this medication because the medication in the UK is different to the US, but some people say it can make them very lethargic. You know what I mean? Certain medications for autistic children and can make them, you know what I mean? It can affect them in so many different ways. Now, as I said, he bonded with Sebastian, where that Sunday, it's just throwing everything up in the air. Was People are asking, and everyone keeps asking this question, was that the norm? Was that something they did every weekend when he was at home with his mum? Was that something they did every weekend? Go out and have such a busy, fun day? Right? Yep. Hashtag SG. From what I heard, Sebastian didn't have medicine 20 days before he went missing. He didn't. I haven't heard that, Robin. You know what I mean? Because he didn't want him on medication. He didn't need it. As he said, right, there's going to be a time when his mum's not there, his dad's not there, and there's no one there, right? There's no one there to remind him to take his medication, yeah? Because they said, is this going to be a lifelong thing with Sebastian? Will he need care for the rest of his life? And his dad said yes, right? Personally, 
I think it's putting his son down a little bit there because personally, any autistic child, unless they're non verbal, if they're non verbal, then it's very hard. Right? But an autistic child who's non verbal will learn to talk through sign language. Right? And I, I think sign language should be a universal language. I think sign language should be taught in schools. And the school where my one grandson goes to in where we live, they are taught sign language. He, is, he wrote his name the other week, a few weeks back. They did this exercise at school in his class. And now this isn't sign language, this is for the blind. And he wrote his name in Braille. So they learn the alphabet for, in Braille, as well as in A, B, C, D, E, F. And they'll probably learn the alphabet in sign language. And I'm thinking, flipping now, that's even better, because you're learning to read in Braille, right? Or write in Braille. You're learning sign language as well as your normal language. For Christ. So he, he learned to write his name in Braille. Now, most kids at his age can just about learn to write their name full stop. But learn to write your name like everyone else and also learning to write it in. Braille, and eventually hoping he'll know how to do his name in sign language. My 29 years old son at 14 was diagnosed with epileptic seizures, and he drowned while fishing. Oh, I'm sorry, Robin. Sorry, sorry to hear about that. Hmm. I'm sorry. So, um, I think if he has seizures, I think he needs to take medication. But Seth said he hasn't had any seizures since for years now. But could that be through the medication that he's taking? That's the reason possibly why he hasn't had any seizures. Yes, he drowned due to seizures. Yeah. So he was on his own when it happened, obviously. So it's, people who are prone to have seizures, I'm not saying they shouldn't do these things. They, they should still go out and do all these things like fishing and all that lot. But take someone with you, you know what I mean? Never do it on your own. I know he's 29 years old, but always take someone with you. Because you never know when you're going to have a seizure. I remember my friend of mine, right, I did the first aid course many, 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 many moons ago. And it's when my children were little. And they said to us, they said, if someone's having a seizure, and they taught us what to do if they're having a seizure, right? But they said, if you don't feel competent to help, then let, leave them. You know what I mean? You could do more damage by trying to help if you're not feeling confident. Right? Exactly. Some kids just don't grow out of an illness. You know, it's like they say, if you're born with uh, asthma, right, you will like, you can, is it, is it if you're born with asthma? I'm not sure if it's some. I'm not sure if someone said to me, "If you're born with asthma, you're likely you could grow out of it as you grow older," or because I'm asthmatic and I wasn't diagnosed until I was um, in my thirties. They don't know, um, but that's what I'm saying. He should have took a friend with him. But anyway, they said, and my friend said, "So what would you do if I had a seizure now?" 
I've said I've put you in the resource position because I feel confident to do that. But other than that, nothing. You know what I mean? You have to leave, just make sure that the head's supported. You know, put them in the resource position so that they don't choke on their tongue and things like that. And she went, is that it? I went, yeah. That's what we was told. Just put you put anyone who's having a seizure into a re resource position so that they don't choke on their tongue. People used to go fishing with my son, but he wanted to do it on his own because he couldn't catch fish if someone was talking. Because he said the fish hear people talking or walking. True. You hear a lot of fishermen saying, quiet, as you walk past them sometimes. Quiet. You're scaring the fish away. Mm, okay. As you carry on walking along the towpath sort of thing. But yeah. Oh, sorry, I missed that one. Yeah, I think it's very, yeah. Well, what did I say when I first heard about that? I said, um, a child who digresses backwards. Right, like he's been toilet trained from a whatever age, but his dad said he did have to keep going back over it. Sometimes he'd be okay, but then all of a sudden he'd go back again, and he'd have to teach him again. Then he'd go back, digress again, and he'd have to teach him all again. He did say that, but um, at fifteen he would know he needs to go to the toilet. Right. And so for a 15-year-old to digress back, something, that's telling me something is not right. Something. Yeah, it sounded like her son was smart. But anyway, but like I said, she could just told his friends if you come, Look, I want I want someone to come fishing with me, but don't talk to me because it scares the fish away. Just sit, be there fishing with me. Have your fishing rod out in the water with me. So, was he a member of a fishing group or anything? Because I'd understand, a fishing group would understand, look, you don't talk while you're fishing. So, it's a shame, and I'm sorry for that, Robin. Um, yeah, Robin, sorry about that. But for Sebastian to regress, or whatever it is, back at the age of 15, and come on, they're sending him with diapers to school. No. No. My two six-year-old grandsons, right, they know to go to the toilet, and my one is on the spectrum, and my other one we're waiting to get assessed. But we believe he's on is somewhere on that spectrum of autism, being autistic. So I think he's more ADHD, hope because he's so hyped up all the time. He, yeah. But if they was having all these problems with Sebastian. What was her problem with handing him over to her, his father? You know what I mean? I know no, one, no mother wants to give her child up, but if it's going to help your child, his friends knew about the diapers. Robin. Well, that wouldn't be good, do you know what I mean? If his friends knew, he's 15 years old and he's having to wear diapers to school. 
No, sorry. And Sebastian, if you ever hear any of this, I'm sorry. Oh, his friend's new. Sorry. Oh, yeah. He just had a passion. Right. CP wanted all the KPs. Can she get rid of Sebastian? No, CP wanted rid of Sebastian because he was hoping he'd get faith. He didn't remember, he did not want his daughter around Sebastian. But it just wasn't happening quick enough for CP's liking. Now, I heard this a while ago, and I heard it again last night. What's the coincidence with the 26th of February? Apparently, the divorce came through, or was put in for the divorce, on the 20, or the divorce came through on the 26th of February, 2018. Right? And six years later, on the same day, Yeah, I don't think KP wanted his daughter, and that's probably why she didn't want to give her son up, because while she's still got a son, the daughter won't be coming to live there. But what would make a child leave that house? Even though we name no law enforcement of said. There's no signs of him leaving that house. We all knew that from as soon as we heard about the dogs. And as soon as we heard about them, no scent for the dogs. Right? No scent from the dogs, no signs from the dogs. Nothing. We all knew he didn't leave that house. They knew about him having seizures. <laughs> Did you have a lot of seizures then, Robin? I should imagine you'd be on medication. God, my ears are so itchy. Right, so... How ha If law enforcement believe he didn't leave that house, how, 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 how else did he leave that house? Now, like I said, you've got some parents whose children go missing and they are adamant from the word go. They're being abducted. Right? The UK girl, Magdalene McCann. My son-in-law overdosed exactly one year from the date of divorce. He got depressed on anniversary date. Some same cooking have happened to KP on you. Oh, ho, 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 SG. Same could have happened. To oh, same could have happened. Yeah. Perhaps he got a drink that night. I still say something happened in that house. It could have started on the way home from the steakhouse. There could have been an argument on the way home. Right? And it carried on once they got home. She's got him to take the rubbish trash out, whatever. Right? And I think then, someone, when I listened to that interview the other night with Chris McDonough and that other guy, he said, when she mentioned the thud, it, I, he reckons that is when something happened. Right? 
he believes, now I think it's between 9 and 10. Something happened between 9 and 10. I can't remember what time the bedroom lights were being seen going on and off. But then again, there was said to be a shadow of someone walking around their house at 11.30 or 11 or 11.30. You know what I mean? Now, if she was on the phone to Chris, would she not say, hold on, Chris, there's someone outside your house walking outside your house? You know what I mean? And I'd go up and I'd have been locking the doors, running to the front, running to the back, making sure the doors were locked, everything. My doors are locked now. I went out today, I come home, and I automatically deadbolt my door. Right? Get bolted. Every time. Right? My son can get in by key, but you can't get in otherwise if you haven't got the key. You're not going to get in. But... So my doors are always locked. I grew up where you could leave your back door unlocked. You know what I mean? I remember once where we had a lovely Alsatian. Her name was Sheba. I think it was Sheba. I'm not sure if it was Sheba or Bao. But every Sunday, we used to go to my grand's. Yeah. If KP was depressed about her divorce with Seth, she wouldn't be on the phone for three hours with KP. With, with CP me. Hmm, it's just, it's just weird how it, and you said last night in that interview that it just means to him it's another day in his life she has ruined for him. So, but he did say he was quite happy for the divorce at one stage, and then he's saying, in another breath, it's the day she ruined his life. It was the thought, remember Sebastian had brought, yes. As I said, I think something happened that night. And whether he died, whether he passed, before she went to bed, I don't know. I think he passed while while he was in in his sleep. Kim, Kim, what you're saying? It's really f up. CP side of the family never searched for Gav, Sebastian or even hanged at that fly. I know. Yes. To end that chapter with Seth by making SR disappear. Yeah. So weird, you're not normal that they didn't do anything. I know law enforcement don't like family to help in the search, right? But why couldn't they help once? Once law enforcement had scaled back on the Sunday, they are scaling back. They wasn't doing no searches from the Monday onwards, right, unless a tip came in. Why couldn't they get off their backsides and go out and look then? Why? Hmm. But I think there's some something happened in that house on the Sunday. Yep, we've all been saying that, Robin. You don't look for something you haven't lost. You don't. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not going to look for what? What have I lost? Nothing. I look for something I've lost. And at the moment, I can't think of anything I've lost. So I'm not looking because I can't think of anything that I've lost. But one day, someone's going, I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to put this on. And I won't be able to find it. And I will start looking everywhere for it then. But if I know, oh, I've, oh, I've been that. Oh, I got rid of that top ages ago. I'm not going to look for it, am I? It's not even going to come into my head. Oh, I put that top on. Oh, yeah, I threw that away ages ago. That doesn't even come into your head, you know what I mean? When you throw something away, you don't look for it. It doesn't even come into your head. So, but that video, that is interesting. Why would he, if he, if he can't be bothered by this case, why? Something she saw. Has got his feathers ruffled. Because why would you say don't post it? And have you posted it anywhere? And if so, take it down. Have you gave this to anyone else? Why is he asking if she gave it to anyone else? It's none of his business what she's done with that information. I'm going to be grateful, CP, that she even showed it you. I'm from the UK, and I'm sorry, but if I'd seen Google Earth and I'd seen something of you would be the last person I'd be showing it to. The last. How will freeze over before I showed you anything? Sebastian is not my first child, missing child I've been following. No, I started watching on YouTube, and I think it's like coming up to the second anniversary, so about 18 months now, right, when I was watching about Summer Moon, Utah, Wells. And I walked, I come into that case and I'm thinking, what the hell is happening in this case? There's so many people involved. So many moving parts in that case. It was unbelievable. I'm going, I, I couldn't get my head around it. I'm thinking, hold on. There's no sign of abduction, but I swear to God there is an abduction. Right, so where did this little girl go? There's no sign of abduction. So I start, that got me into the YouTube and I used to get so rattled. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to get myself a laptop. So I did. And I thought, I'm going to open myself a channel up because I have so much to say on some cases. That if I was to keep messaging, putting it in the comments, I'd be there all day fucking typing out these comments. You know what I mean? Law enforcement will not and will not tell a parent not to search for this child. No, they tell you, they ask you not to, but they don't tell you not to. Why? Because they don't want you going out somewhere and getting hurt and injured. But Seth was out there and he said, look, I can't just keep driving around in my car. I need to be able to get out of my car. So they come up with this agreement. Okay. You let us know where you're searching. So if we don't hear of you, we can send someone out to help you. Or if you phone us and you need help, we know where you are. So that's what he was doing. Yeah. So, but... As I said, I hadn't done nothing on Sebastian all week because it was just a circus. And I thought, I'm not going to keep regurgitating everything. I'm not. So what I've decided I'm going to do is just going to be a Monday and a Friday. I'll talk about Sebastian. And then Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, I'll, I'll do one night or two nights, whatever it is, on other cases. Yes, that's another reason they don't want parents going out there searching, SG. That is another reason. But I'm sorry. You'd have to lock me up in a straight in a straight jacket and put me in a fecking cell 
to stop me looking for my child. Nothing on this earth will stop me from being out there looking. Because while I'm out there in the cold, I'm out there in the cold. What a shame. I'm so sorry, Robbie. I remember you talk, telling me about your daughter. I do, I do remember you telling me about your daughter. Now that can't be easy either. Still fighting for, for that now. But, mm -hmm, what's going on here? Joe Clyde, yet never found. Even though the father admitted to it. Now, if you're going to admit to it, yeah, to the murder of your of a child, at least tell him where he is. You know what I mean? Tell him where he is. If you're going to admit to it, you're going to go down for it anyway. You might as well tell him where he is. You know, I'm going... How would freeze over ten times before anyone would stop me looking for any of my kids? Even now, I'm now like 34 and 32 years old. I'd be out there looking. Yeah, they don't want you there because if they, if you do come across and find your child, it's only instinctive to want to go and hold them and cradle them and you know what I mean it's your instinct a motherly parent it's your parents instinct coming out and they can't have you do that because that body that child is evidence you know what I mean I know it's not nice it's not it's not nice to say that but That body, the child or whoever, is evidence. There could be fibres on their clothing. Anything, you know what I mean? Which would tell them where he's been or how he got there. But if I was crime scene, right, if I was her, I would send it to Seth. I really would. I'd message, I don't know, who, who would I message? Not Tony. Um, because I don't think Tony should know anything first. I think Seth should know straight away. Because this was a, load, a problem he had. This is a problem t Seth had. Right? He had people working for him who was going out doing searches. And they're using Sebastian's name. We're looking for Sebastian Rogers. Is it okay if we go and look on your land? But then they wasn't telling Seth where they'd been and looked. So if then if Seth would go up to this land, oh, um, is it all right? For, could we do a search of your land? I'm looking for my son. Oh, but we've already had someone come here once. You know what I mean? But he's not finding anything out. So I can understand him getting mad about that. He needs to know where it's been searched, so he's not going to waste his time going there again. Remember when Katie said they pray that no one ever has to go through this? I wish I could have asked her why, Katie, you're the one that did this. Well, what was that word she used in that one interview she did with that guy? Um... Oh, what was that you heard she used? And I thought, what? That's a strange word to use. I can't think of that word she used now. It'll come to me in a minute. 
is appealing. Disgusting. No, not dream. Uh, tragedy. It's a tragedy. What is a tragedy? A tragedy is losing someone. Losing something. That's a tragedy. Unexpectedly. Not like... Like Robin. She lost her son. And she's lost her daughter. That's a tragedy because it wasn't expected. Right? In my eyes, that's what I call a tragedy. Because it wasn't planned. It wasn't expected. No one knew that was going to happen. Right? So how is this a tragedy? Your son walks out the house, supposedly. And you call it a tragedy? No. No. That isn't a tragedy. So, why use that word, Katie? Someone said in the US, they, use it, they look on the word tragedy in a different way to the UK. I don't know. To me, a tragedy is when something bad happens and it wasn't planned. It wasn't, you wasn't expecting that to happen. Like, you've had a car crash. That's a tragedy when you just smashed your car up. It wasn't planned. I didn't plan this, you know, sort of thing. That's a tragedy. Well, I hope he doesn't win his appeal, Robin. Because that's just injustice. And you know what? There's like people who've been put in jail in the UK. I'm not going to say what for, because it can get a bit political otherwise, right? And they were found innocent. But while they were in prison, their families were looked after. Their families were well looked after by this organisation, by this group. And I always said, if they didn't do it, then they know who did. Yes, tragedy sounds like the end of something. Yes, and she used that word in that interview she did with that guy. It was only a three or four minute long interview. And I thought, tragedy? What tragedy? You know what I mean? What happened then? I don't know what happened. All I know is your son walked out that door. Don't know why he walked out that door. But he walked out that door. So you're emphasising the fact that he walked out that door. So everyone focuses on that door. Right? Couldn't be the back door. The veranda door. Because that squeaks. You have heard that. As Chris said, we would have heard that. We? You wasn't even there, Chris. So how would you hear it? Right? Um, but, no, I don't know. Something happened, and I think she put him in her car, and she was gone longer than 10 minutes. Way longer than 10 minutes when she went off driving. I think it was more 45 minutes, because she said she got in a car about, round about quarter past six. 20 past 6. The police were at her house by 20, 10 to 7. 6.50, 6.55. Bang, about that time. She wasn't home then. So where was she? Could, but some people are saying there was a hangover after the Texas Roadhouse. 
Three people are involved in Sebastian, you think, but Seth is not one of them. Hmm. I don't... I wouldn't say Seth is involved. He's not involved in this. Harry's behaving with some of his actions is a bit odd. But then again, this guy is going through how. I think if I was this guy and my child was missing and law enforcement weren't telling me nothing or only sending me texts periodically um, and all this lot, I'd be flipping angry now. Like he said, he's angry now. He said when he went to the house on the day, what did she do? She had her phone in her hand and she shoved her phone in his face of that picture. Right? See, we had a good day yesterday. Now, why would she do that and say that to Seth when the photo she showed him wasn't even from Sunday, it was from the Saturday? So why... Well, surely he can't appeal no more, Robbie. You know what I mean? If he's been sentenced by two different judges, life in prison without parole, how can you still... How can you still um, appeal? Because you can only appeal if new evidence comes up. So what new evidence have they got? So... So people are saying she could have handed him over to Chris on the night time. Now, neighbours are saying they've got no footage on any of their security cameras or ring doorbells of the car coming back that night. Well, it must have come back because someone was seen taking the trash out. Right. So the car must have come back. Someone must have come back. So it's a bit odd that some of the neighbours have said, two of the neighbours have said they've got no footage of them coming home that night. And what I don't understand as well, knowing Seth was at the house on the chip Monday, he said neighbours come over with a Monday or Tuesday, something like that. He said he was at the house and he was sitting in a chair somewhere and neighbours were coming back and forth and one neighbour come over with their footage, camera footage. Why didn't he just go up and have a look himself as well? I would give. I don't want my list is my song, I want to have a look at this. And if they said, oh, this is going on, I'll go going, excuse me, this is my song who's missing. Not his song, my song. I want to see this footage. You know what I mean? I would have said that. I would have gone and seen that footage myself, got up and seen it myself. So that, I don't understand why he didn't get up and just go and have a look at that footage. Because I know I would have. So, so that didn't make sense to me last night when he said that. There's some little things he said. He wasn't going to talk about Katie. He wasn't going to put her down. He did say by her bad mouthing him in front of, of Sebastian. That's like traumatising for any child to hear the mother bad mouthing the father. Or the father bag mouthing the mother. Right? So, I don't believe in that. So, no mother should. And I don't believe parents, mothers, should use a child to get to the father. 
or even the father using a child to get to the mother. I don't know who to trust as to what is said, particularly with people who only talk on phone with the creator. Yeah, yeah. It's like he played that phone call of that with that woman he lives with when she phoned Seth up. Why did he record that? Why was that recorded? It's getting a bit bad where YouTubers are now recording everything. That's why I would never phone another YouTuber. Never. Because they'd have you recorded. They'd record you. And then they throw it back at you. Well, I've got you on recording. Look, here it is. And play it. Now, to me, that isn't something that YouTuber would have done normally. So I'm wondering, did that woman kind of like put a bit of pressure on him to put that out there? Uh, Bull on buggy, buggy needs to get her butt eaten to Tennessee. She would, she was on her way down here at one stage, but her car broke down. So she had to go a quick fix to get, to, just quick fix to get her back home again. So she had to do so that she could get the other part for the engine. And she's still waiting on her car now. Me, the money she's put on this car, she could have bought a new one. She really could have. Sorry, Bet. Sorry, Bullhorn, Betty. Right, but normally Betty, Bullhorn, BHB would have been there. She could have been outside their house with her. Where's the baby? Tell us the truth, Katie. You was the last one with him. Right? Why is Chris protecting you? Have you got something on Chris and has Chris now got something on you? Hmm? At the beginning, either CP, no, either KP or CP said, I of the Tiger, Sebastian Fabson. Last night said something, said something else. They have a different opinion, so no one is right, no one is wrong. Exactly. So I'm not joking the other day, my son come, what was it, to pick up my, my granddaughter's bag. And they had to go to get the, the brakes on his car check because they're squeaking a bit. I said, he's probably need new brake pads. Right? I never did find out what was wrong with that. Anyway, he, he pulled up in the car, so I've gone down. And my grandson is sitting in the back of the car and they've got this sort of like moves going, which is like a rap song sort of thing. Oh my God. I said to my son, I said, don't blame me when he starts saying these words out loud. Right? But he's sitting there in the back of the car and he's got his hand to his ear and he's like jamming away to this music. And I thought, and he's singing away as well to, to this, rapping away to this song. I think, oh my Lord. So cute to see him do it, right? But it's just the words that was in the song. My son said, he said, I forgot about the words. I went, yeah, I think you forgot about the words on this song, didn't you? So, but it's so cute when he's got his hand up by his ear and he's bopping away lot. <laughs> and so, you know how the DJs do it? How they've got the headphones on the ears and they've got the one hand on the headphones and they've got that. That's how he was. And I thought, oh my God, that's so cute. He didn't, he didn't dog KP at all. It's like BHB asked about the CA thing with KP when she was younger. And Tony said, watch what you, watch what you say here, Seth. And Seth said, I, I'm not going to talk about that. That isn't my right to say that. 
You know what I mean? He does look love Tyler Swift. So it's just he's got as Chris said, he's got a a, a, a clippy or whatever ties to music. I like all types of music. Right? I do. Believe it or not. I like a bit of hip hop, I like a bit of uh what is it? Uh Oh, I can't think what it's called now. But I like right down to uh, the music from the up, mu upper music and orchestral music and all that. Like. So it all depends on my mood as to what music I want to listen to. Like when my neighbours, when I lived in my other block, my neighbours above me. Like I had neighbours below me and neighbours above me. And the neighbours below would party till like 3 a.m. in the morning. And then the ones above would do DIY work at 11 p.m. at night. So I'd get up in the morning <laughs> and I would put my music player on the floor, but with the speakers facing the floor, right? Now you think, why? Now, my daughter's partner, he play, he, he's in a band, like with the drums, right, when they walk down the streets and they're playing the music, and he plays the drums. So I put that music on, and I love that music, I really do. And, um, and all, all you get out is a boom, 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 right? And then you got bagpipes going, and you got everything else going with it, and he's going, Boom, boom, and I have it on. I just put it on full blast, put the speakers facing downwards. So then below me, who was A, conked out from their partying the night before, right, would hear that. And then I then get my hammer out and my hooks and start hooking, putting hooks up in my wall for my pictures. Boom, 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 boom on the walls. Right, so them above me would hear that. And I thought, yeah, you, both of you, come down to my flat. You come down and you come up. Because I swear to God, I'll lamp you both. Because you're hammering away at 11, 12 p 11 p.m. at night till about 1 a.m. Then they pick it up at 1 a.m. playing their flipping music till 3, 4 a.m. So it serves them right. Rob, hashtag Robin, does Bullhorn Betty usually go on location? Yes, she does. She was going to come on location, but as I said, her car broke down and her car is still in the garage now. I feel sorry for her. I really do. Because she can't, she likes to get out and about. She likes to go out on location. Right? She even had, she hasn't shown no one, but she had maps sorted. Of, as to where she's going to go searching everything and she has apps on her phone right so whoever is with her has that app on their phone as well yeah and they can track where they are so she can track and keep on a, a track on everyone where they are everything So she don't mess about when she goes out on location. She's not one of these, I'm just going to go out there and rally outside their house. No, she gets it properly done. And a lot of people don't like Bullhorn Betty. And to be honest with you, I've only just recently started watching her the last six months. And I like what I'm hearing. And especially with this Sebastian, she is just Sebastian. She just, she, she's like Nancy, she don't care about the circus. She wants this child found. And that's like me, I don't care what the circus is doing outdoors. I just want this child found. And if you adults can't pull your big girl and big boy pants up, right, and stop all this in-house squabbling and bitching at each other, then get out. 
get in your car, drive away, and let those who do care about your soul get on with their job. That's all I can say, and that's to all three of them. What was it Seth said? If you can't put your differences aside, then F off. Well, that's my, me, to them. You, Seth, Chris and Kate, put your differences aside or feck off. Because we don't want to know no more. There might still be those out there who want to hear this drama. Right? And those YouTubers who are playing to this drama are getting, yep. The views and the clicks and all that, lot. that's fine. But you see, it will only last for so long, so make the most of it. I clicked onto you weeks ago. I got off that crazy train weeks ago when I said, Right, we are going back to the beginning. We are going to focus and go back to the beginning of where it all started. Ground zero. Yes, you've got search parties, different search parties, and no one knows who searched where. This is what Seth was saying, because no one is telling him where they've searched. He goes along to go search there with his party, and they say, well, we've already had someone searching here. And he's thinking, well, I haven't been told this. So they need all these flipping searches, as I said, Pull them all, your big boys and girls' pants up. Pull them up. Put your differences aside. That's to the PI who does the searches as well, whatever her name is now, I can't think. And Chris, Seth, Katie, Tony, all of them, the searches, everyone. Put your differences aside. There's one thing and one thing only you need to focus on. And that is this lad. Now, if they could just all put all that energy they put into bitching and biting and each other, put all that energy they used to do that into searching this for this child, be amazing. It would be amazing what they could do. You know what I mean? So, it would just absolutely... So, they all need to... BHB needs to get in touch with that ever searcher that's out there. Right? The, ex, the PI who's out there searching. She needs to get in touch with her and find out where she's been searching. So, she can cross that off. And they also need to get in touch with the dog handler, Jules, and find out where she searched and cross them areas off. And then say, well, well, you've done this area, you've done this area, we're going to do this area, okay? And let them two know that you're doing this area. And then perhaps they can say, well, when we've covered this area, we'll do this area. No, Betty hasn't left Florida yet, or wherever it is, FLA, wherever she is. She hasn't left. She's got no car. The car's in the garage. So the garage, the guy who's fixing her car is took ill. So he's been ill, so he's not being out of the garage. So <laughs> I don't know when she's got a car. Oh, is it fixed now? Oh, thank God for that, Betty. I bet she's happy. <laughs> oh, well, if it's fixed and it's working good, she'll be down in Tennessee soon. She'll be down here. He's in for the... Um, he's at Nashville at the moment because... In Nashville. Because he's uh, going to the crime car. But he did say he's going to do a search after that, right? But he's not going to film me, right? He's not going to tell anyone where they're going. 
he may need PJ, he and PJ, I'm just going to go out to a certain area. I don't know if anyone else is going to meet up with him, but he said he's going to do a search while he's down there. Right? And I might as well, because they've got their five-wheeler or whatever it is, their motorhome, their five-wheeler. So it isn't as if they've got to pay for hotels or whatever. They've got their five-wheeler. I'm sure they said they're going, yeah, the great gang, I'm sure they're taking their five-wheeler with them. Yep. She, she, she went, she studied law. I'm sure she said last night she studied law. I'm sure she said something about studying law or something. So she knows what she's talking about. But this is the thing you see. You got Dolly who's down in Tennessee at the moment. Now, would he have gone down there this weekend if it hadn't been for the crime con at Nashville? I doubt it. Right? Betty will be down there now, now her car's fixed. She will be down. Watch that. Watch that. This space. Betty will be down there. But she she needs to get in touch with the Jones, the dog handler, and find out where she's been searching, find out where that other woman's been searching and her party's been searching, find out where Seth and his team or whatever have been searching. You know what I mean? And say, so, right, just let us know where you've been searched, where you're searching, so we can say, okay, that's ticked off. This area's been ticked off. That area has been done. Right? And if you don't trust, if you've got to ask for permission to get on a land, but you, the thing is, once you've been on someone's land, they're not prepared to let someone else go on it afterwards because, hold on, they've had law enforcement go over their land, they've had other search parties go over their land, why are they going to let a third party go over their land? You know what I mean? They're not going to. So, you just got to hope that whoever is searching that land is doing a proper job. And as I said, I'll take a stick with me, a long stick, which I, I use as a walking aid, and B, I'll be knocking any long grass down flat, literally knocking it flat, right? I'll be knocking all the bung, bundles of sticks and rocks and whatever, uh, branches, you name it, out the way. That is how thorough I would be. If I come up to a tree and there's a bunch of sticks by this tree, I'd be knocking them out the way. I don't care if I spent 10 minutes knocking these branches out the way, I'd be clearing that area around that tree. And I've seen searchers going past trees and I thought, hold on, I've seen one group walk past this tree and this woman's walking past this tree and there's a big, and I mean a big bundle of sticks and branches by this tree and it was quite high. I thought, how do you know there wasn't a body under there? Because no one moved those sticks, no one looked. They just walked straight past it. I thought, really? You're searching? Where? Because you... You're not moving anything. Because I'll tell you now, if this if you're searching open land and rivers, you're not looking for you're you're going on a retrieval. Right, I'm sorry to say that it's a retrieval. But if you're looking in buildings, old houses, old uh, forest hooks and things like that, then you could say, I'm looking for a child. He could have slept in here. He could have been in here. He could have been in there. But when you're searching open land and rivers, hold on, my cat just, hold on. 
I don't, my cat just jumped up on my table and I can't see anything because I'm in, I've got no lights on. I'm going to have to put my light on. Hold on. I can see now. You, it's actually a retrieval. And I'm sorry to say that. And Seth, if you ever hear this, I'm sorry to say that. But if you're looking in, like, um, these... Is Bonnie the cat somebody? If you're looking, like, in these hooks that are in the woods, that um, some people might use for hunting and things like that, for sleeping in overnight, then you could say you're looking for a body, you're looking for a person because they could be in there. They could have used that hook to sleep in. Things like that. But when you're looking open land and rivers, you're not looking for a person. You're looking for the body. And it's sad to say that, but we don't even know which way he went. If he did leave that house on his own accord, we don't know. Which way he went. He could have rang up the road. Up his road. To the houses at the top. And cut through the passageways and whatever. Their uh, gardens. To get to the woodland up there. But I can't see. I can't see. As you said, law enforcement have said. There's no sign of him leaving that house. So how did he leave that house? And it's not good either way. You know what I mean? If he didn't come back from the Texas Roadhouse, where was the drop-off? Where was the exchange? Who with? Did Chris come and meet her and they did an exchange? We don't know because I can assure you, if he came up, if he left that salt on the Sunday, They'd have him on some camera somewhere on the highway as he's driving up, as he's coming into Nashville, the lights, anywhere. There's traffic camera lights, there's businesses with lot like, uh, cameras on. They'd track him somewhere. So I really don't think Chris was there. Right? But why is he protecting Katie? It doesn't make sense. Something happened and he's protecting her and why? A woman in our Facebook group called in a hunch to TBI. There's a hollow within about a mile of Sebastian's name. Yes, I've seen that. Yes, I thought about that, and she said, she's seen, it's on someone's land, right? But, if people are throwing mattresses down this, with this hollow, then, obviously, this person's land, they're not checking their land, because I'll be going, hold on, why are they fly skipping, why are they fly tipping, because we call it fly tipping here where they just throw rubbish wherever they want, right? It is a good search place, and she did phone the TBI up. She's on the phone when I seen it, I saw her live. And she phoned TBI up. And she said, she got off the phone and she said, well, it's just the way the woman was talking to her. And it's like, yeah, okay, love, okay, yes, I'll get in touch with whoever's doing the searches, we'll find her. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, attitude. So she had a feeling that they wouldn't even check it up. So she's tempted to get a, a waders on, sort of thing, she said, because of the snakes and everything, she said, and go down and have a look herself. Now, I still think those two caves that and caved in on themselves, they should get proper search team people out there searching those caves. They know how to treat caves, 
right? They'd be able to go into these caves, move the rocks out of the way, maybe, and get in and check them caves out. But they won't, they haven't even done that. Are they caved in? There's got to be no one in there. How do you know there's no one in there? How do they know Sebastian didn't climb in to one of them caves, which caused the caving? Right? They don't, because they've never got those two caves checked out properly. So, but yeah, I seen that. I seen that. I saw a friendly CPO and said, I don't think I've got to do a check. What's it called now? I can't think of her channel. I'm actually subscribed to her. And I love her. I, I think she's so funny sometimes with what she says and whatever. But she comes up with some good points, some good areas. You know what I mean? She's from that area. She's from round there. She lives around that way. Don't know where about, but she says she lives pretty near there. So, what Facebook group was that anyway? SG. So, I don't know. It's just weird. Like... Where did Katie go that morning when she said she jumped in the car while on the phone to Chris, while on the phone to the police, she jumped in the car and drove around. And she said the first time she was gone like something like 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes driving around. And then Chris tells her to get back home. So where did she go? You know what I mean? Did she have, oh, that was something I did look into. I wanted to know how long a body, right, hold oh, yeah. on, because I was going to talk about it on the Tuesday, but I didn't, I, I did something else on the Tuesday. And I looked into it, I did a bit of research, and I tell you, if the police was to check my laptop, <laughs> They'd have me locked up because I put I put in my search Google. How do we move a body without leaving any DNA or decomp? I swear to God, if anyone saw that on my laptop, they'd be going, "What?" <laughs> anyway, it takes twenty-four to seventy-two hours post-mortem, right? Three hours post-mortem, stiffening of the muscles, a.k.a. rigor mortis. So three hours after the death, you get rigor mortis. 24 to 72 hours post-mortem after death, internal organs. Now, please, if this is too much, I understand. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Because after I read this and I wrote this down, I thought, I'm being cremated. 24 to 72 hours post-mortem. Internal organs begin to decom decompose due to cell death. The body begins to emit pungent odours. Rigor mortis subsides. So... The body then becomes very limp. Oh, I'm so glad about that, SG. Right. So, after 24 to 70 hours, the, the, your internal organs would start to de decompose. Right? And that's when you get the odour. You get that pungent smell. And they say it's a smell once you find it. Once you smell that, once you smell it, you don't forget that smell. Three to five days post mortem, as organs to decompose, bodily fluids leak from orifice. The skin turns 
a greenish colour. Now that's what I wanted to know. Could Sebastian have passed in his sleep, had an argument with his mum, bumped his head, gone to bed, finally fell asleep and passed? Why? Because of what she said in that first interview. Something like, I went in and woke him up and he was gone. I can wake someone up if they're gone. Several people have been pointing this out when that interview has been played. Right? So it takes three to five days for any leakage. Right? And eight to ten days, the body turns from green to red as body decomposes and gases accumulate. That's when the body bloats up. Two plus weeks post-mortem, teeth and nails fall out. They're falling out already, don't worry. One plus month, the corpse begins to liquefy it into a dark sludge. Now, that got me thinking as well. That kind of upset me because I thought, you know what, this child could be out there in the wilderness and this is what he's, you know what I mean? One month to several years, depending on the environment, burial, etc. What's that? I can't remember. I can't remember what that bit was. But the bit I wanted to know was, could you move the body without leaving any DNA like decomp, like smell, or any liquid, right? And I could have. Because three hours post-mortem is stiffening of the muscles, that trigger mortars. 24 to 72 hours. But when you think it wouldn't have even been 24 hours. So the body would still be in rigor mortis. Right? So if he passed in his sleep and she moved him from that bed to her car, maybe in a sheet or a plastic covering and put him in the boot of her car or whatever, it was not going to leave any DNA. Yes, you can freeze the body. But what I wanted to know was, would it leave any DNA in her car? Like decomp or anything like that. And it wouldn't have. Not in the time span of her moving that body. Because she'd done it within 24 hours. 24 to 72 hours, internal organs begin to decompose. And rigor more, and the body comes out of rigor mortis, and you get that smell, that pungent odor, right? And then three to five days, as organs decompose, body fluids leak from orifices. You know what I mean? So, within the time limit she had, from say when he went to bed, maybe it's say ten thirty eleven. Because I think something happened between 10 and 11. Not knowing. He was asked to go to bed at 9. He's still messing about in the bedroom. He's not settling down. He's still hyped up from that day. The medicine isn't working. Right, she's having an argument with him. Right, the lamp on his bed probably gets knocked over. And that's what you see is the flickering of a lamp. Because when you knock a lamp over, the bulb loosens and it flickers on and off. Right? And then they finally get him into the bed. He goes to sleep. But because he's bumped his head, they thought nothing of it. He's gone to sleep and he passed away. So, say from 10 o'clock at night till 6 a.m. That's six. That's eight hours. She's got between three hours, three hours, up to twenty-four. Right, the body is in rigor mortis. It's not leaving any smell. It's not leaving any liquid, any fluid. Right, so she could have moved his body in the morning, put it in her car, and then transferred it to wherever, down that hillside maybe, where that one woman said, anywhere, it 
Yes, the skin it sheds, but if wrapped in a but if wrapped a couple of times in a plastic, can keep DNA contained in plastic. Yes, in the time span she had, she could do that and leave no DNA in her car because her car was checked. Right? Did they use any looming on? We don't know, but they did say the dogs went through the cars. Now, if they picked up his scent in the car, she could say, well, yeah, he was in the car last night. He was in the car because we'd been out for the day. So that's her way of getting his scent away. I wanted to know if it would leave a smell in the car or any fluids from the body would have been leaked in the car. But it wouldn't have because the smell wouldn't have come until... 20, until 24 to 72 hours after death. Right? That's when their smell starts, 24 hours to 72 hours. So two to three days. Um, hang on, 12. Yeah, around about the 24 hours. So, like, if he passed that, say 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night it'd be between that time and 11 o'clock the following day on the night time before the, uh, the, uh, the organs start to decompose and that's when you get the smell so she had and how long was he after 10 days and it had no smell wow It says here, eight to ten days, the body turns from green to red as body decomposes and gases accumulate. Ah. Well, I think it all depends on the conditions the body is kept in as well, yeah. Yeah. Like some people, when they murder someone, they turn the air conditioning up, don't they? They the heating up. Right, so that they make out the body for some reason. I don't know what it does if it's warmer. If it's cold out, the body would stay going to rigor mortis slower. So, by heating a room up, you literally bringing on rigor mortis quicker and Decom quicker. I should you make that's something else I'm going to have to look up. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be doing this. Check for room conditions. For decom. But she had enough time to wrap him in plastic from the bed, get him to her car, right, and leave no DNA in her car of any dead, of any body being in there dead. That's what I wanted to know, and I found that information out. It took me a while, because a lot of sites wasn't allowing me on it. Hmm. Right, I'll find it. I'll get round these obstructions. You call coroner, smell has to do with persons, medications, illnesses, stomach content. Yeah, they do say if a person is really healthy and looks after themselves and eats proper foods and drinks the proper fluids, then it's like the, um, the gases in the body. It can take longer for the gases to build up. Right, so that's why sometimes if a body in water depends on this, how healthy the person was beforehand as to how long it would take for that body. Because when you go in water and you drown, you eventually sink to the bottom. You don't just float on the top and drown. 
and flow. You sink to the bottom. And then when the gas is built up in your body, which is around about 8 to 10 days, that's when your body will float up to the top. And depending on how cold the water is, how healthy the person was beforehand, or how all works in with the process. But I, yeah, I found out what I wanted to know, which was she had plenty of time to move his body in a plastic covering or plastic bin bag, put him in a bin bag or whatever and get him in a car and leave no DNA or decomp of anything, no smell, no liquid, nothing. Oh, he's in it, ooh, can you not pick his brain, SG? Pick his brain. <laughs> Come on, do a bit of research and go and pick his brain. Ooh. Can you answer just a few questions? Three hours later, <laughs> I'd be like that. If I knew someone in that area, I'd go, oh, can, you, can I ask you a few questions? And then literally it'd be like two to three hours later, we finish. I go, I only want to ask you a few questions three hours later. But no, um, Oh, SG, you always need to keep in contact with people like that. You never know when you need them. <laughs> but, no, um, I do know someone who works in the hospital. But I haven't spoke to her for a while because she's, she, I used to know her when I lived in a, another part of Scotland. But then when I moved back to where I am now, I... I lost contact with her because she lived like 15 miles away. You have some, I have some knowledge. I'm glad you have some knowledge because I have sod all. My brain is like mush some days, really is. My son would probably say it's mush every day. He's getting ready to put me in a care home. I keep telling him he's got to have coffee on demand, internet. Right, I don't care if I can't go out the building. I'm not one for going out anyway. So I have to have coffee on hand. That's every hour. A mug of coffee. Have I seen The Godfather, the film? I've seen all of The Godfathers. I love them films. In fact, I might watch them tomorrow, actually. I like them. Oh. I've watched all the Godfather, Godfather films from the beginning to the end when he dies in that chair in that villa in Italy. So, yeah, I've watched them all and I think I, I love them. I think that's, I'll tell you something else, right? I'm one of these people that like, I like all the Die Hard films. Right. And anything with some action and whatever in it. It's got to have some action in it. Your husband is Sicilian and looks, looks like a made man and sounds like one. Ooh. Keep your hands on him, girl. <laughs> but, you know... So she had time to move his body, wrap it in plastic, because plastic will hold. It's like if they say, well, there's DNA on his bed. Well, yeah, there would be. He sleeps in it. You know what I mean? But there wouldn't have been no DNA from like the smell of a, death, of a dead body or any fluids from a dead body because he hadn't been dead that long, he'd been, he'd been rigor mortis. 
still being rigor mortis as possibly. So, hmm. But no, I was writing this down. I thought, right, I've got to write this down so I read it down. And then I thought, you know what, I'm so glad I'm getting to, I'm going for a cremation and not a burial. The thought of that going through my head after I've died. Do you know when I die, this is going to happen to me? No, no, no. Put me, put me in the flames of fire. He was a professional musician at some hooked junks. So he met some questionable people. My dear friend's husband was hooked up. <laughs> oh, God. But at least you won't have no... If you've got a husband who looks and sounds like that, you're not going to get any hassle off anyone, are you? So... You're not going to get no hassle off anyone. People used to accuse me of hiding behind my husband. No, my husband was the one who hid behind me. <laughs> because I was the one who went up and had a go at anyone or everyone. If they paid me off, I was there. Went for the juggler. And my husband would go, you know what? I'll, let her, I'll leave her to it. She'll sort it out. My neighbour thought she was a hit man. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my Lord. So, anyway, what else? Hi, Gigi. We've been talking about this video that crime scene obsessed, is he? Hold on now, just yes. Crime stories obsessed put out. Have you seen it, Gigi? Very interesting, isn't it, SG? Very telling as well. So, but, you know, um, I was just talking as well about, I always wanted to know, if, if Sir Sebastian had passed during the night, right, could Katie... I've wrapped him up in some sort of plastic or something and put him in the back of her car or boot of her car without leaving any of his DNA or anything like that. And I did. And she had time to do that without leaving any decomp smell or anything. There wouldn't have been nothing like that in her car because it was too early. In, it would have been too early in the process. For that to be happening. So I'd like to know where she went that morning. She said she went up by the school. Now the school said they'd got video. They'd got school from the video. Uh, video from the school. Now this is another thing that annoyed me. When I heard that. I thought hold on. You went and got video from the school. Right. And right by the school. Is that shop. Right by that school is the shop. So why? The show Dexter was informative. I I used to watch him. I haven't watched him for ages. Why? Right. I used to watch all them CSIs. I know it was a drama and it was all speeded up. Like, there's no way they get half the results in the time they're showing. Right? 
but um, it's just the way they showed you how they got the results and everything that got me. And I got my neighbour onto it as well because he was all into these crime scene programmes, right? Yeah. I could never understand it though. Was he a serial killer and was he put in prison for it or was he or wasn't he a serial killer or had they never even caught him? As a, was he working with the police but at the same, same time killing people? That's what I couldn't get my head around. I'm thinking, what? So I couldn't ever understand that show. But um, anyway, so as I said, you've missed all the squirmish stuff, GG. He's going through the process of a body after post-mortem. What the body goes through after it dies, after they die. And the time it takes and everything. Now, because Gigi's just coming, I'm going to play that video again, okay? And there's others that have come in as well. After I play. Uh. Um. Oh, God. Wake up, really gonna rise in the sun. Step two, I'm up to get some good, some food in you. Step three, go off there. But it's Emma, you're at Crime Stories Obsessed, and I've been holding on to something for the last few weeks, and I'm gonna tell you about it. So, as some of you you may know I like to look at Google Earth. I cannot search for Sebastian. I'm in the UK. And so the only method I have is looking at Google Earth. Now, some of you say, yes, some of the images are not new. Some of the images are old, um, but they do update them quite frequently. And satellite images, rather than street view, satellite images are pretty recent. So I decided, given the fact that he's been gone for a good few months now, well, for most of this year, I decided that I was going to have a little look. And as I was searching, I found something that just made me stop in my tracks. And as you know, I've found a lot of things, but I've never really sent them to anyone. I found something as I was looking and it really caught my eye. Now, this wasn't in Hendersonville. This was in North Carolina. And I don't know what made me look in North Carolina, but I found something. I have passed it on to a couple of people, including Terry Lynn. But let's get to the start at the beginning. So I found this image of what looks like somebody in the water. And I did send it to Ellie, but I don't know what Ellie do, whether they actually pick up on any of these messages and tips, how often they look at them, and I sent it to Chris Proudfoot. Yep, many of you are going to say, and everybody has their own opinions because everybody thinks somebody is responsible for this and who it could be. So I sent it to Chris, and the only reason why I did is because he's the only number I really have. Um, and I sent it to him, and I sent it for two reasons. One, because I wanted him to go and have a look or to send somebody to have a look or maybe to get LA to get off their asses and maybe look a little bit quicker. Secondly, I did it because I wanted to know what kind of reaction I would get when I did send it to uh, him. So they looked at it and I was told, first of all, I was asked, have you posted this anywhere? I said, um, before I could finish, um, he said, can you take it down anywhere you've posted it? So I was like, right, okay, yep. So I took this image down and I came back to him and I said, right, okay, I've taken it down. 
and he said who's seen it and i said um well i don't think anybody really so he said right he said please don't send it to seth please don't send it to anybody that is involved with seth or knows seth so i said okay and he was quite adamant not, not to send this information to seth and i sat here and i literally got quite upset about this because there were a lot of things going on in my mind first of all i had to tell myself off for sending it to him in case he is involved and at the time i sent it to him i didn't think he was involved because you go back and forth don't you we mean i do um so i i told myself off so i don't I don't need any of you to tell me off for that. Um, I'm quite capable of uh, telling myself off for that. And then I sat there and thought, why would he not want people to see this image? Why would he not want Seth to see this image? And why would he not want anyone involved with Seth to see this image? And it really, it really got to me. And it's been playing on my mind for weeks and weeks and yes ellie knows about this it's been playing on my mind for weeks and weeks and no i'm not going to put the image out on here but i'm going to tell you that the response i got was not quite what i expected and i don't understand why if seth uh, forget you forget you just forget for a minute who you think's responsible and who you don't think's responsible why would the stepfather of a missing boy not want the father who is out there searching forget the arguments between the two of them forget the going back and forth between the two of them if the dad is out there searching why would he not want the dad to either see or hear about this tip and that's really got to me and it's played on my mind and I've toyed with it and I've spoken to my friend Evil Exists for weeks about it and she knows all about it. And we just both think it's just a little bit odd. And I'd like to know what you think of this and why you think he told me not to send it to Seth. Why he would not want the man who is currently out there searching with search groups not to have any information, not to have the tips, not to send them to Seth. What do you make of this, guys? I've been toying with this for weeks. As to even put this out there, I'm not going to put the image out there just yet, but I want to know what you think about this. Please let me know in the comment section. Take care, and I'll be back with you again soon. Bye, guys. Right. Now, that was what we played earlier. And she will be beating herself up for this herself. So, yeah, we don't need to beat on her anymore. She's beating herself up enough. But, in a way, I hope she does go to, I hope she does get that information to Seth. Because why should Chris know about it and not Seth? Right? But now this video's gone out. Seth might get in touch with her himself. I wonder if there are other missing children in North Carolina. I, well, I'll tell you now, right? I'll go on Google and I'm going to put some missing children North Carolina. Right. And let's see what it comes up with. It doesn't have to come up with anything specifically for North Carolina, but it does come up with this site that I use a lot. And uh, I've been getting a lot of like, I've been doing, like, these one-minute videos of these missing children. 
and tells you exactly where you've got Monroe, North Carolina, October the 13th, 2023. Right, um, and you're in North Carolina. You know what I mean? But it didn't actually give you the actual. Here's a list of all the children from North Carolina. So there are other children in North Carolina that have gone missing. And that's what that FBI agent said the other day on that interview with the Pascal show. She said, every item that is found, law enforcement should go and collect it in. Because, okay, it may not have anything to do with Sebastian, but it might have something to do with other, another missing child case. Or another missing person's case. I'm just wondering if what she has may be relevant to another case. But that would be great if it helped in any other case. Yeah. But what I don't get is why would Chris say, I take it down, don't post this anywhere and B don't show Seth or anyone associated with Seth. Why? Why? Please, I don't understand why he would say that. As some ruffled these feathers and oh sugar, she's getting a bit too close. You know what I mean? And now, if that was the case, right, say she has got close, she's showing it to him. He could be on the phone to whoever, saying, look, you need to move this. You know what I mean? He don't know if he's got a burner phone. Right? So he could have got onto the phone and said, look, we need to move this now because something's been found. But I'd like to see myself what it is. Because if she gave it me, I would not share it with anyone unless, until she did. Once she shared it, then I would share it. But I wouldn't share it. If she gave it me, I wouldn't share it. So, but... I just can't understand why CP would not want Seth or anyone associated with Seth to know about this. Well, I'm sorry, Chris. He's going to be on the phone now to her if he hasn't already been on the phone to her. Asking for that video. For that whatever it was she had to be sent to him. Why? Because someone's going to get into just telling you about this. I can assure you. You know what I mean? Look, you come on my chat tonight and you, someone said straight away, have you seen that video by Crime, Crime Stories Obsessed or whatever? And I said no, but I had seen it advertised. And I was going to watch it, just didn't get round to watching it. So someone else is going to have seen that and think, oh, I'm going to send this link to Tony, or I'm going to send this link to Seth. Right? Seth, you've got a YouTube channel, so you could get him, send him that link. Just go on that picture, that video we posted, and put the link on there. You know what I mean? It get to see. It's like someone messaged me and said, um, about that Seth having that YouTube channel and how he opened it in when, 2016 or whenever and he's only ever just posted a video now. Well, like a lot of people, they used to use YouTube for music. Right? I use YouTube to watch certain crime crime programs because you can't get them on normal TV. You have to have You can only get them on YouTube. Like, normal TV wouldn't play any of these crime programs I watch. So you, you have to watch them on YouTube. 
And that's what I used to do. I used to watch a lot of YouTube programs. Right? And then, it's like I was doing a live last night about a young girl called Glory Page. Right? Who went missing a year ago on the 3rd of June. 3rd of this month, is he? The 3rd of June. Three days' time. She went missing a year ago. And they said she had no social network footprint. No footprint at all. Now, I was listening to the phone call last night on here where the father, uh, a YouTube had phoned the father up, emailed the father, and they'd arranged a phone call. And he said at the end, just come home, we'll go on a vacation and do some YouTube stuff. And then a little bit later he said, he mentioned the YouTube again. I thought, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you go on YouTube, right, you can go and watch YouTube on TV or on a laptop, right? But if you want to comment, you've got to have a channel. You've got to, you have to sign up. Right? For YouTube. So you've automatically got a channel. Whether you use it for good use or for no good use, whatever, is your choice. But she had a YouTube channel. Did this young girl that I was talking about yesterday, Lori Page, have a YouTube channel where she posted videos, be it short videos or whatever? Right? If so, she's got a digital footprint. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I saw a message. Yeah, I saw the comments. Yeah. So I truly believe she was on, watching something on YouTube. Don't know what could have been. Could have been a, um, anything. Could have been anything about hair, and nails, makeup. You know what I mean? A uh, certain game channel, right? She could have posted a comment on there. People could have come back and said, Hi there, I agree with you. I like your way of thinking. You know what I mean? She could have made, up friend, made a friend through a YouTube channel. So I just think it's... So when people say, oh, but he's had this channel, don't you think that's a bit whatever? And I thought, I thought at first, yeah. Then after I commented, I, I walked away from my laptop and I thought, you know what? No, because I had a YouTube channel for a good 18 months before I started doing my own YouTube. Before I actually started doing any lives myself. You know what I mean? But I never posted anything on my channel. Didn't do no shorts and post them. Didn't do nothing. I just used my channel so that I could log in and watch these programs that I like to watch. And occasionally leave a comment. So, it's, yeah, pedophile sex offender traffickers always a concern, especially for a naive 12 year old. Well, Look what I said about Sebastian. You know when he's been on his walkabouts around the area? He knew his way to Culver's. Could he have gone there one day when he's been out and about? His mum said he knew the way there. Extra malt. Right? Um, could he have met someone at Culver's and start chatting to him? Made a friend at there. You know what I mean? These pedos know exactly how to get these children. Oh, I'll buy you that. I'll buy you that ice cream. You like the extra malt? Yeah, I'll buy it, yeah. Hook, line, sinker. They've got that child then. 
Oh, you like these games? You like playing these? Oh, you need to come to my... I've got all these... All these games you can play. Hook, lie, sinker. And this is a 15-year-old autistic lad who's vulnerable, only ever wanted a friend. So what if he did... What if his mother put him outside the house that night? What if? I'm just saying, what if? And you knew his friend lived close and you went to his friend's house. I, I can't see it happening, but there's a possibility it could have. Because he's a very vulnerable lad. He's 15 years old. He just wanted a friend. That's what I said to him at, at Christmas. All I wanted for Christmas was a friend. How sad is that? Because his mother literally cocooned him in that house. He didn't go anywhere without her. He didn't go to his friends. He didn't have friends to go to. Because they never associated with anyone. There was no groups he went to. Now, I've, as I talk about my one, one grandson a lot, because I see him a lot, he goes to Beavers on a Thursday. He don't go for the full time because he gets very tired because it's new to him. It's a new routine and he's got to get used to going there and staying awake and being alert because he gets very tired. He goes, I'm tired, I want to go home. You know what I mean? So he doesn't stay there the whole time. Now, this, not this Thursday, next Thursday, I think it is, next week. Is he? Not next week. One week, I've got to go over. Because they're doing a bike training course. So they can get the badge. And they're holding it at the park. So his mum's going with him. So I'm going to look after the little girl. <clears throat> But she don't ever feel stick it out for the whole time. He might do because it's outside. He loves being outdoors, so he might stay out. He might stay the whole course. And I can guarantee you now, by the time he's done that whole hour or an hour and a half, two hours, he'll be riding that bike perfect. Because I'll have him. I'll teach him how to ride the bike. But Sebastian didn't do anything like that. How about Sebastian sees a stranger in a car, stranger says, I see you, you're barefoot. You shouldn't be out like that. Where are you going? I'll give you one. Yes. But he's not going to want to go back home, is he? Right. Mm. God, I'm sorry. He's not going to want to go back home. If he come out of that house on his own accord... It was because of a reason that was happening at home. Perhaps if his mum had put him outside for a punishment, perhaps, yeah, okay, I'd best go home now, yeah. Take me home. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's a possibility. But as I said, it's just a vulnerable lad. He just wanted a friend. So if he knew his way to Converse, he could have gone there one night, one afternoon, to get whatever it is you get from Converse. Struck up a, uh, a chat with someone. Because these people, they know what they're looking for in these children as well. They can tell by looking at a certain child. Hmm. That's a target. I'll start, to, I'll start a chat with him. You know what I mean? Or her. They know exactly what they're looking for. They can tell by looking at a child. You know what I mean? I think KP locked him out. I think he'd say to his stranger, take me to my dad's. Yes, if anything, he'd say, take me to my dad's, yeah. 
Yeah. But like you said, police have said, law enforcement has said, there's no sign of him walking out, that leaving that house. There's no sign. So what do they think? If they have said there's no sign of him leaving that house, then how did he leave that house? He didn't do a, a Houdini and just vanish into thin air. It doesn't make sense. Two and two do not make six. Two and two make four. And that is... He didn't go out that door. They're putting every emphasis on that door. I don't know why he went out that door. It's like Madeline McCain, her parents, she was abducted straight away. Nothing else. No possibility that she could have walked out of that apartment down the streets, got hit by a car and someone's panicked and put her in the back of the car. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. No, she was abducted. Summer Moon, Utah, Wells. No possibility of anyone coming up on that land. No way. Not in the time span that Candice put out. She was not abducted. So how did she leave that land? How did she leave the hill? I think Sebastian was sick and tired of abusing. He was going to tell his dad everything. Do you know one? Perhaps he said that's it. Uh, perhaps he said to his mum, "I'm telling my dad everything. I'm gonna tell. I've had enough. It's no pointless me telling the school because they don't. They send out child services, and you have a go at me again. So I'm gonna tell my dad. But how did you leave that house though, without leaving any scent or any track, any sign? Nothing. No camera, no door ring bell, N nothing, no footprints, nothing. It, that's why I say, because they're emphasising the fact he went out the front of that door, I don't know why he went out that door, because he didn't go out that door. He went out the garage door in the back of your car and somewhere along the roadway, when you went off driving that morning, you dumped his body. You got rid of him somewhere. Where, we do not know. Was there a hangover? Possibly. Exact. That Magdalene McCann, right? This is why I say they medicated him. They put, gave him some medication to help him sleep. Because the morning before she went missing, she said to her mum, why didn't you come to us last night when we was calling for you? When herself and one of her little twin brothers was calling for the mum. The, the people who lived above them or to the side of them heard the children crying that night. So... That night, they gave him something to sleep. Yeah? I think Madeline's woke up, fell over, still drowsy, fell over. Something happened. Right? Or, because Madeline was already tired from that day out sailing, because she'd been with the uh, kids' club sailing, yeah, and her friend's hat had gone in the water and she dived in the water to get the hat or something like that. She was tired already. Katie said when she picked her up, she was saying how tired she was. So perhaps giving her that medication, she gave her that little bit too much and it killed her. Yeah? And they've had to get rid of her body somewhere, somehow. And why... With all those people, all them friends coming into that apartment for the first hour before police even got there. All the friends coming in and out of that apartment, in and out of that room. Those babies 
didn't wake up once. Right? And yeah, the per that person who checked on them at half nine, why didn't I say, where's Magdalene? You, see, you saw her last. They didn't question any of the people that checked on those children, not one of them. You know, if that had been me and my friend had checked on my kids before at half nine, I'd be, hold on, you was the last one to check on my, our kids. What happened? What happened to my daughter? You know what I mean? But oh no, she was abducted. And as soon as a parent says, says, says anything, is so adamant about a certain thing like abduction, the door is taking the focus away from what actually happened. You know, with Katie saying, I don't know why he went out that door is taking the attention off any other door, such as the garage door. And the only way you could get out that way is via the car. What she did on the morning, she jumped in that car, drove around. By the time I got to the school, he was already and stopped. She stopped what she was saying. But her hand motion went across her neck. Right? He was already... Already what, Katie? By the time you got to the school, he was already what? Right? So, I definitely believe he was in that car in the morning. And she wasn't gone 10 minutes like the neighbours were saying. I think she was gone at least 40. When they don't consider any other options, they know exactly what happened. I saw that interview like cutthroat. Yes, I missed that. But as I said, I don't look for body action. The, the way the body reacts, I listen to their words, right? And sometimes I may have to listen to that interview two or three times to, like, slow it down a bit and listen to it on my headphones to try and catch what they say. But I don't look at body actions. But that was good, good catch by that woman because that is definitely... Thingy too. I don't know how many times I've done that, you're fucking dead. You know what I mean? And put the, your hand across your throat. You're effing dead. You're gone. You know what I mean? How many times I've done that when I was younger? So, and it was then he did the... <coughs> Did he not? He gave the cough. Yep. He did that cough. Then she's going, and, and. He did a uh, 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 three-way call. She had to think what it was. The three-way. That's why she's going, well, three-way call. When she got to the third finger, she said, three-way call. Yeah, because she's putting too much detail into what she was saying. She was going off the script. But why is he? Why is he so defending her? She was the last one to see her son. He wasn't there. Apparently, he was not there. So why is he defending her? I'd be going. You know what, love. You need to tell the police everything. You need to talk. If it was an accident, you tell them it was an accident. You can we cannot hide this. You know what I mean? If it was an accident, you say there was an accident. He bumped his head. He's got a weakness on his on his brain, in on his skull. You know what I mean? With this fluid. 
we had an argument last night, he bumped his head, he's then gone to bed, fell asleep, thought nothing of it, I woke up, rang in this morning, he was gone, he was dead. She could have just done that. Because something definitely happened on the Sunday night. So, but then after that first interview, they did the other interview and it was the hangs. After that first interview, then she did that one with that other YouTuber where she did the hang signal across the throat. Yes. And did you notice even after she done it, she kept putting her hand up to the throat? Like, you know, when you imagine someone's trying to strangle you, you tr you're doing everything, aren't you, to get the fingers off your throat or whatever they got around your neck. You're trying to grab at that item around your neck, aren't you? She was doing that with her hand. She was doing that against the neck. With her hand. She was bringing her fingers down the neck. CP wants to do CP news, KP to watch paper for CP as well. KP, so that's everything. So she's going to give up her job to look after his child. Hmm? Don't think that she want that, do you? There's no way I'm going to give with my child to look after someone else's child and have to give up my job to do it. Well, with my child, I can still work. They couldn't afford to live where they are without her working. So, did you return home that night? That was one of the things in the titles. Did you, I think he did return home that night. I do. But I don't think he left that night. I don't think he left that house. Not on his own free will. Um, what else was there? That date, the 26th of February. That was when CP is in charge, not KP. Well, Seth said she's got a nasty temper, right? So, and we know CP's got a nasty temper. So we know both CP and KP have got a nasty temper. So they make a perfect match. But why would she be so willing? Like, I've never known a woman be so headstrong in her own beliefs. Yeah? Someone who's always been in charge, had control of everything, to just suddenly relent, relent, relentish order for some guy to belittle you to make you into nothing. I can't see how a woman would do that because she'd be thinking, hold on, hold on. You're not talking to me like that. Who the hell do you think you are? You know what I mean? Because I'm that woman. I'm that woman. Like, someone talks down to me. It's like, just stop there one second. The other weekend, my granddaughter, right, she cracked me up because my my grandson said something. And as he said it, he turned around and walked out the living room. And my granddaughter, who's three years old, she stood there and said, just you wait a second. I thought, oh, no one's going to be messing with you, are they, sweetheart? It was like, just you wait a second. You know what I mean? So why would she relent, give all that control up to have some guy tell her what she can do, where she can go, everything? Yep. Yep, she didn't want to give Sebastian up. 
And in a way, I'm pleased that she 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 didn't because that shows me she she did have feelings for him. Right? She didn't want to give her son up. Who? What mother would? Right? But what mother? either by accident or whatever, unalives their child and then hides the fact. What mother does that? What mother jumps, will put her child out into somewhere, into the open somewhere, and you just heard what I've read, what a body goes through, and lets her son... A, a, a child's body go through that. No. I, I can't understand why she let someone belittle her so much to the point where she would do anything. Perhaps KP didn't give Sebastian, so she was, drink, she was drinking every and an accident happens, she shows regret. In that very first interview, I'll say over and over again, I'm no body expert, but her rocking back and forth, it's like, and she's trying to remember what to say, and when she can't remember, she looks at Chris, and he takes control, yeah? And she's sitting there thinking, I just want to tell the truth. I just want to tell them what happened. But she can't. Why can't she tell the truth? Right? Why? What are you talking about? Oh, shut up. Right, that's my cat. Moaning as usual. Why can't she tell the truth? Why is... Why wouldn't she not go on an interview. She's only ever done one interview without Chris. Now, I don't think, I don't believe Chris wasn't there on that interview. I think he was there. But he just didn't want to be on the interview because it was a man who was doing the interview, not a woman. He only likes to go on shows where women do the interviewing. Because he thinks he can control a woman. If she passed polygraph, we're wrong. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Who else passed a polygraph? And was a serial killer. What was his name? Oh, God, can't think of his name now. Right, but there's... Plenty of serial killers are past polygraphs. There's things you can do as well to pass a polygraph. You can take beta blockers, which slows the heart rate down. Or any other medication that can slow the heart rate down. That's it, take Bundy. Yep, he passed the polygraph. And look at him. <laughs> How many did he kill? But he passed it. So, and you got to remember, she's ex-Navy. He's ex-Navy. They know how to control their, their heartbeat. They know how to stay calm. They have to start, be able to stay calm in stressful situations. So, but apparently, from what I could make out with that interview, she did the other night, he did the other night with BHB. I think she used to throw that, the fact that she was in the Navy, in Seth's, pla in Seth's face. I'm I'm in the Navy. I've got a job. Why can't you get a proper job? Staying at home looking after... That's not a proper job. Uh, I'd like to tell you, Katie, staying at home and looking after any child 
is a 24-hour job. There's no respite. You get no respite when you've got a young child or any child, especially an autistic child. None of the experts I've listened to believe she's psychopathy. Psychopath. Hmm. But it all depends. What, how, what, like, did you sit kill your son? No. Perhaps he didn't kill him. Did you have an argument with your son? No. Pum. Heartbeat goes up because she's lying. Because perhaps she is, did have an argument with It all depends what questions they asked her. That FBI agent said they asked them three specific questions. They asked more than three questions, but there's three specific questions they will ask. And they might ask those three specific questions in three different ways. I don't know. I can't answer that because who would leave their child? Did you, you know what I mean? From what I understand is while she's in the Navy, they had good medical care. You know what I mean? Hi, Peggy. No one has been cleared, no, and they won't do. No one will be cleared until this investigation is over. And this investigation is a long way from even starting. As I said, many cases I've watched on TV. It, it, said it takes months, months to get the information they need. Look at that uh, case with uh, that Aubrey, Audrey Cunningham. Right? They had the guy in prison. Yeah, for something else. Right, for, on some other charges, on this assault charge, that was it. So, and then they're charged him with the murder. And then there's that uh, Magdalene Soto. They had him in prison, in jail, for those sex charges, yeah? And people are going, why haven't they charged him? Why haven't they charged him? Because there's no rush. He's not going anywhere. They're in jail. They're not going anywhere. So they could take their time to get all the information they need together and make it so tight that even the um, defence team can't, can't beat it. She may have gone in over to get away from being a mother. Yes. You know what I mean? Perhaps she couldn't deal with the problems they had, he had. You know what I mean? She never had that mother instinct thing, I don't think. Like, look at her own upbringing. Her own upbringing. It wasn't brilliant. It was not brilliant. So, what she learned? What did she learn from her mother and her father? You know what I mean? Nothing. She had. She. What she probably wasn't even shown love as a child herself. So people who aren't shown love don't know how to show love back because they don't know what, what, what it is to show love. They've never had love shown them, so how do they know how, to, how do they show love back? She had a terrible childhood, yeah. Peggy, right. I think if you could get KP away from CP and question her for hours, I think she would spill everything she knows. But they've already done that at the very beginning. They did, they questioned them up both on their own at the very beginning. 
kỹ nghiên chỉ trên ai so if she was going to crack it would be in the first day or so she would have cracked because you could see in that interview that first interview she did not want to be there it's like i just want to, to tell the truth she wants to tell the truth but she couldn't now it's gone past that it's gone past that now So I think I could have her in a room for 40 hours. And she's not going to give in. She's not going to. And the only person suffering with all this is Sebastian. Because she's the only one that knows what actually happened on the Sunday. There's no way after all that he did on Sunday that he said at 9 o'clock, Okay, Mum, I'll go back now. No, no, I love you, Mum. I love you, puppies. No, no, off he goes. He's not going to do that. He's 15 years old. He's still hyped up from that day out. He had, it's like his last meal. Right, he had his last meal. Have you ever thought perhaps... On the way home from this day, he wanted to go into Culver's. And his mum said no. And that's when an argument started up. True, a lot of people do, yeah, Peggy? Yeah? You know what I mean? It's breaking that cycle. Right? If you break that cycle, you only need someone in your life to show you this is what life can be like. This is what your life could be like. You know what I mean? But if that child is not being shown any of that, any love, any care, which he wasn't, then it's not gonna, she's not going to have any attachment to anyone. Someone once said to me years ago, and I mean this, years and years ago, to be able to love someone, you've got to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, then how can you love someone else? Perhaps she didn't love herself enough. Right? Perhaps by joining the Navy gave her that routine that she needed. Even though she was only a, an engineer, like an electrician or something like that. Engineering. Yeah? But it had a regiment to it. It had You know what I mean? So I I think the Navy, she joined the Navy for that I for the health care benefits because of her son and because it gave her that routine. It gave her Well, I'll tell you something, I know a child. Right? And when he was growing up, his mum would keep either him or his sister off school, right? To look after the two younger children. So she could sleep on the sofa or stay in bed all day. Right? Whatever it was. And I said, after knowing this family for about, what, six to eight months, I said, when your two kids are old enough, they're going to leave home. And it won't be because of you, anything you've done, it'll be because of all the hard work they've put into it, right? Well, they both did, they left, they went to college. The daughter, she did brilliant at college, right? But the son, he wasn't 
coping so well in college because there was no routine, there was nothing like routine for him. So you know what he did? I think he joined the Navy. I think he joined the Navy. And he, he, he flourished because he had that routine. But at college, he didn't have that routine. He could do whatever he wanted and he wasn't used to that. He's used to a certain, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. You know what I mean? Bum, 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 bum. By his mother. So he's used to it. I don't think KP has motherly instinct skills. She never learned it. Exactly. As I said, if you're not shown love as a child, how can you show love back? You've got to love yourself before you can love others. Right? She was never shown love as a child. So how can she show love to a child? But it can happen. You only need that one person to show you in your life. Look. This isn't how life is. This isn't just how your parents are. Isn't like that for everyone. It doesn't have to be like that for you. You can break that cycle. You can. And by doing it, you can then learn to love yourself and then you can love others. She didn't break that cycle as such. She didn't learn to love herself. Because they go on about this age difference between her and Seth, right? Me, I've got no different problem with age difference. My husband was 11 years older than me, right? So when I met him at 19, he was 30. Right, when I was 16, he'd have been 26. He'd have been 27. Right, but I met him when I was 18, 19. So he's 30, 29, 30. And um, so I don't look on age difference, but now thinking about her life, perhaps she looked on Seth as a father figure sort of thing. Yeah? But then once she married, it was totally different, and that's when things started to fall apart, and then she got pregnant, so then she had Sebastian, and then it's like, I can't deal with this, I can't cope with this child. I know, we get health care, if I join, if I can get in the Navy, we'll get the health care benefits. So in one way, if she did it for that reason, she was still sh showing some care for her son, because she knew she needed the health care benefits for her son. Penny, absolutely, SG. My niece gave her, her son up when he was seven months old. She knew she wasn't mum material. Exactly. And that's the right thing to do. It's hard, but at least she knows that child will have a good upbringing and will be loved. You know what I mean? I've watched many cases on TV where long lost family, yeah? And they're finding their, their mothers and the mothers were worried that they didn't, wouldn't want anything to do with them because they gave them up as babies because that was the best thing they could do. They couldn't give them a, a life they needed. So they're literally putting them up for adoption. So when these uh, daughters or sons were finding the mothers, the mothers were worried that they wouldn't want nothing to do do with them. Yeah, she loved that baby by giving him up. By giving her a child up, she loved him because but not, she knew she couldn't love him and give him what she, he needed. So by giving him up, she did love him by giving him up. By keeping him could you sent her spiraling down another path?
which we don't even want to think about because she did the right thing. So, but anyway, that's my opinion. I don't, I think he came home from that night. I don't know what the date, the 26th of February, has got to do with it, with the um, divorce and the fact that on the 26th of February, eight years later or whatever, he disappears. You know what I mean? Could it be her way of... I think it could have been a bit of both. I think she was feeling, you know what? Tomorrow, it's how many years since I've been divorced from your dad and yours. He, he could have said something to his mum. I can't wait to go and live with my dad. Why? And she's probably thinking, you know what? Tomorrow is eight years away that like, I've been divorced from your S of a father or whatever she called him. You know what I mean? And you're throwing that in my face when I've done everything for you. So, my birth mother was raped. She wanted to keep me but couldn't financially. She had to give me up. Yeah, he's telling us, SG, you've got other family, haven't you now? Other brothers and sisters? It is. It's the best thing. Do you regret it, SG, that your mother gave you up? That's the question. Right? Some people might say, well, I didn't have a good life. My, my job depends. And that's it horrible to me. You know what I mean? But nine times out of ten, those children do get a good life. Yeah, I'm glad you've got a relationship now. So, but I don't think she did have that. She had some mother instincts, but not enough to carry it through. But I just think perhaps an argument started on the Sunday night. And then she's got this in the back of her head. He's probably said, I can't wait to go and live with my dad, blah, blah, blah. And she's going, after all these years, I've looked after you. I've got everything up for you. And now you're going to throw that in my face. You know what I mean? You have 10 siblings. Oh, my God. A lot of birthday presents, Christmas presents. <laughs> but, um, but I seriously think something happened on the Sunday night. And she had time to move that body, to move his body. Where to, I do not know. Because we do not know where she went. We know she went up by the school. Was there a hangover by the shop? We don't know. Because even though the police went and got the video footage from the school, they didn't think of going to the shop, which is right opposite the school, and getting their video footage. That doesn't make sense to me. Too expensive for presents. <laughs> best present you can have is each other. That's the best present you can have, SG, is to have each other. Nothing can beat that. Nothing. But anyway, I've been on here three and a half hours now, just babbling on. I've thrown some out there. We've watched that video, which I'm quite pleased about because that's got my brain thinking. But tomorrow night, I'm cook I'm doing a live, not about Sebastian tomorrow night, it's about, oh God, about a young girl, Whitney Hatfield. Because I put a post on my community page asking if you've got anyone I'd like, any case you'd like me to look at, to let me know. And I won't, I'll, I'll set up a live. I wonder how much I can see from school video. I don't know because 
you've got those houses and you've got trees. You've got trees and houses and then you've got the road and then you've got the shop. So... So tomorrow night, anyway, I'm doing a live on Whitney Hatfield, okay? So if you want to sit here about that, come and join me. That's an interesting case. Then on Sunday, I'm doing one about James Yablonski. Yablonski. It's nice when I hear stories like that. It's nice. Anyway, so thank you all for being here. Thank you for telling me about the crime stories, Obsessed. Otherwise, I wouldn't have played it. I was going to play another video, bits of that interview, but we can do that another night. And I'll go watch that now. <laughs> and then I'll go and going, holy crap, I should have played that in my life. Anyway. Yeah, I'm doing them both. I'm doing Whitney Hatfield tomorrow night and James Jablonski on Sunday. But if there's any other cases you want me to have a look at, leave it in my community. I'll leave that up for now. But you can always scroll down on my community page and find it. Thank you. But um, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And please remember before you leave, hit that like button on the way out. If you like if you like what you've heard and what you've seen, please hit the like button. Just help get that this video out more. And it pushes the uh, something to do with the analyt analytics analytics. Oh, I'll always keep Sebastian there, but I just need to go into other cases as well. You know what I mean? Because at the moment, there's nothing new coming out. So I don't want to be sitting here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, babbling on about nothing. So I don't want to get into that circus. I do not want to get into the Seth, Katie, Chris, whoever, Tony. Crazy, the crazy, crazy crypto. You, you know what I mean? I don't want that. So I want to stick to the facts and just do that. Anyway, so I will be back Monday night doing Sebastian. So I'm going to do Monday and Friday night Sebastian. All right. But anyway, tomorrow night it's Whitney Hatfield. So I hope to see you all there. And. Have a good day, the rest of your day, and a good day tomorrow. So till then, thank you all for being here. And thank you all for listening to me. Good night.